Also, for the coaches, I have just sent you an email with a link to our YouTube. Uh, it's being live streamed today, so if you want to send that to anybody to share, uh, they can watch your team uh, do their presentation. I want to recognize and introduce our judges at this time. Uh, if you would, just turn around and stand up, whatever you want to do, beginning on my right and your left is Tommy Welcher, adjunct professor at the Coleman College of Business here at UPIC. David Tackett, on this end, uh, President, Eastern Region of Community Trust Bank. Latasha Friend, Coordinator for Client Success for SOAR, shaping our Appalachian region. Amy Irix, Manager, Customer Care, Appalachian Wireless. Amanda Clark, Manager, External Affairs, AEP, Kentucky Power. And Jewel, President and CEO, of Governor's School for Entrepreneurs. And Rosanna Hutchison, the Director of Employer Outreach, Rule Up, Inc. And then our timekeeper is Kathy King Allen, who is the Director of Community Engagement with the Foundation for Appalachian, Kentucky. So I'm gonna thank each of these people for giving their time today. <laughs> our team mentor is Tim Caldwell. Tim back here, Tim was with each, uh, was with each team at, at the three different district challenges, and he wrote uh, some critique notes that I shared with the coaches. So like I said a few minutes ago, he's here today just to answer any questions they might have before they come on stage for their pitch. The prizes for today is first place, each team member will receive a $500 cash award and then second place, each team member $400, and then $300 for third place. Also, the Governor's School for Entrepreneurs, uh, I'm assuming the same as last year, uh, they will hold six spots in their summer program for any student on any team in the regional. You don't have to be on a winning, winning team. Any student that is that successfully goes through the application process, which they will assist you with. And it, I think we had two students from last year uh, from this competition that took advantage of that. And we were very happy about that because there's a lot of scholarship money available and just the experience itself is phenomenal. So I really encourage you to consider that uh, and, and hope you do so. I want to acknowledge uh, Karen Hamilton and Terry Tackett and Denise uh, Roberts, three of our Cedar people who's out front uh, uh, taking care of the, the front of the desk. So and Terry and her husband was here till almost, I guess midnight last night, putting our backdrop up. So they do a lot of things behind the scene that nobody knows that we couldn't do what we do without those people. So we really do appreciate it. And I want to thank Charity Deal, who is the Director of Conference and Event Services, Services here at UPIC, uh, Teddy Murphy, Coordinator Audiovisual, Charlie Cable, uh, Coordinator for Audiovisual, uh, Marie Blevins, General Manager, UPIC Dining Services, and then Mountaintop Media is here, Matt Holbrook, and one of his associates, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have his name. Uh, I'm sorry, what is his name? Pardon? Y'all hear that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Anyway, the, uh, Matt is the Director of Visual Communications. So thank you all very much uh, for being here. So our first team up <coughs> is, is Betsy Lane. And if you are ready, y'all can come and take the stage. Now, I asked you, uh, we have three bikes because there some of you, there's five team members. Uh, so sort of split the difference, okay? And when you speak, step into the mic, if you would, okay? So everybody can hear very good. You might have something really good to say, and if we can't hear you, then it's just, uh, it's lost, okay? So when you get ready to speak, just step forward. Now, y'all need, can you, you don't have much room over there. I'll push y'all 
stays there. Go ahead. Okay. Timekeeper. I'm sorry. What? You ready to get them hooked up here, okay. So the timekeeper, can she hold up the, uh, she'll give you the three minute warning, okay, and then the one minute. Oh, judges, one thing I didn't say well, well, uh, when you're in the Q&A and a time runs out, Be safe, not sorry. As of 2022, approximately 27% of Kentucky's car wrecks were due to drunk driving and texting on the phone. This program will inform all the consequences of reckless driving. Our program would provide free Fitbits called Safe Bits connected to our app. Not only will we include Safe Bits, but we will also provide a cute keychain for our keychain. These are some examples of our safe bits and keychains that we will be producing. As of right now, after getting your intermediates while getting your driver's license, you have to take a mandatory four-hour class in order to get your full driver's license. We would want to add a presentation of our project, product to after a four hour class to add about 30 more minutes to it to tell about the causes of reckless driving. Um, as far as the outline of our app, we want you to be able to push the button and it would alert three emergency contacts. If you ever feel that you're in an unsafe situation or you can't drive yourself, you can push our button. 75% of our classmates have been in situations where they need our product. This is our cost and revenue. We plan to be giving out free 412 safe bits to our fellow classmates at Betsy Lane High School. Although it will cost 25 for production, we will be charging 35 to purchase these safe bits. We will also be partnering with all family resource centers in Kentucky, Kentucky Transportation Center, and State Representative Ashley Tackett Lafferty. Here's a video of the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet when they visited our school on October 25th.
Our video won't work, but it's basically an example of if you were ever in a car accident and how bad it could be. And you could press our button on a sa our safe bits or on our keychain, and it will send out two emergency contacts and your location so they can come and reach you. We will also have an app to connect with this. We're done. Any questions? Uh, yes, congratulations uh, for being here. One question I would have, the emergency contacts, can it also be a private contact to a parent, or is it all based on a 911 call, or? No, it could be private. It's connected through the app, so you set it up through the app, and whichever contact you put in is the one that can reach you. Okay, you know, always difficult when there are tech gremlins and you handled it with grace and uh, calmness, so good job with that and also explaining to us what would have been shown. Um, you know, uh, I I'm curious about, is there a website? That, is there a little bit, could we look a little more at what this looks like, what the interface looks like actually? Is there anything to look at? We haven't created a website yet, but we do plan on in the future. It's gonna be similar to Life 360, but it's not gonna have, it's gonna have more privacy mm -hmm. for that person. Okay, so, so um, it sounds like you've already got some funding maybe lined up, but just not a prototype yet. Yes. Got it, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. I'm curious, when you guys were thinking about this, what made you think about this product and it's very similar to a cell phone making a call or a text, and why this product? Well, for example, if you're ever in a situation where you're at your friends and they're doing bad things or maybe drugs, and you feel unsafe but you can't reach your phone, if you have one of our safe bits, you could hold in our button and it will send a contact to your location to pick you up. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Hi, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, have you identified any specific competitors uh, within this market? Our competitor is kind of Life360, but they had a lawsuit on them not too long ago because their like location was sent, like everybody else had their location. So they're getting lawsuited right now. So our location would not be sent unless you hold down that button on your safe bit or on the app. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Quick question. You mentioned, I think one of your slides said that it will cost you $25 to produce your product and you're gonna, you're gonna charge $35 to do that, correct? Yes. Did I read that? Okay. Um, do you or have you secured startup funding for the ones that you're gonna produce to sell to start with? No, we have not yet, but we plan on doing fundraising and partnering, partnering with um, Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and Family Resource Centers in Kentucky schools. Great, thank you. Good job. Um, the only question that I have is, um, have you thought about, is there like gonna be a monthly fee for this or is it just a one-time purchase with the, uh, the Fitbit top? Uh, it's a one-time purchase. Okay. Good morning. Congratulations on being here. It was a, a great presentation. Thanks for uh, talking to us about this. It seems like a business to me that may have potential and interesting some, some government clients or insurance clients. Have you given any consideration to possibly linking this technology or your app to some type of device that's wired into the car that wouldn't allow it to start without um, checking like blood alcohol level like they do with, with people who've had multiple DUIs or something like that. Because at this point, you have to act in the same way you would with a cell phone. You have to take that action. Have you thought about linking it to something where you can take action before you're inebriated 
and then once you become inebriated, it would allow you, it would force you to prove that before you could get behind the wheel. We haven't thought about that, but we will take that into consideration for our future plans. Thank you. Thank you. I've got uh, just uh, maybe another comment. As you mentioned, future plans. So if you do move forward with this and uh, end up presenting it more, or trying to go after sponsors and funding and so on, I just encourage you to think about uh, in the open there, some, a little more storytelling. If you have any personal stories to share, if you know any students uh, there at school, just something that really makes this more personal, a little more um, relatable maybe for people who are listening, just to try to hook, hook in uh, the support that you're gonna be asking for from folks. Yes, actually one of our fellow classmates last year was involved in a car accident because of drunk driving and she had no like no location for someone to help her or no contact to reach her so this kind of gave us an idea to help this and if you had her permission or could get it moving forward i would encourage you that would be a pretty gripping memorable way to open your pitch thank you mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, next up is East, East Ridge High School. I'm Olivia Stanley. I'm Madeline Robinson. I'm Lauren Coleman. I'm Landon Robinson. And I'm Ivy Lane. And, and we, we are Bright, Bright Future, future Care Center. Center. And we care for the future. facilities in our surrounding area within 40 minutes that offer not only daycare services but after school services to school aged children. Why we are here? We are here because we saw that personally in our friend groups like for example on my dance team there's a girl who she was forced to quit the dance team because she had to take care of her siblings after school and she was missing out on those after school opportunities that we should all have a chance to be able to participate in. If she wasn't there, her siblings who were all under the age of 10 would be forced to walk up a holler where there's no supervision after they got off the bus. So we want not only teenagers, but school age children to be able to have those opportunities after school and learn. Our solution, we hope to provide a care facility that offers daycare and after school care for absolutely free for the after school care and for the families in our community and get a chance to help all the youth in our area. Continuing on to her story about the dancer on her dance team, I had a player on my volleyball team who had to miss a bunch of practices to care for her younger siblings who were all Head Start kids, and they can't stay home by themselves to take care of themselves, so she had to miss a lot of practices, and it ended up setting her back a little bit on her volleyball skills. We're unique because we offer life skills such as chores that kids can't learn at home because they're they don't have the parents there to help them, as in laundry, washing dishes, just like basic chores to run a home, and personal finance skills that they might not learn at school, like how to write a check and manage money. 
They, we offer safety knowledge, like guest speakers, like firefighters and the state police department to show what would happen in case of an emergency when you are home by yourself. We offer social skills and tutoring to our high school volunteers. We'll help the school aged children, maybe kids their age, maybe kids younger than them, in subjects that they struggle in academically. We offer familiar faces, as in seeing somebody in the hallway that you know and you can feel comfortable enough to talk to, community pride, responsibility, and independence. Our price comparison, we charge $140 per week for daycare children, but our after school care is 100% free. The other daycares in our area are 40 minutes away, so on top of their prices, there's also gas money. When they're 40 miles away and that's a trip there and back every day, that it adds up to be a lot of gas money. That gas prices are really iffy and it gets really expensive at times. Um, parents who pay for a daycare child get sort of like a two for one deal or a three for one deal where they only have to pay for daycare and they don't have to pay for the after school care. This is our floor plan. Um, our entrance, you have to come through our front desk first for safety precautions, not just anybody can come into our daycare. Um, we have a nursery for our uh, daycare children ages zero to two, a playroom for our daycare children ages three to five, and a classroom for our school age children. The younger school age children has an elementary school, middle school, and the life skills area that will have a full kitchen, a laundry room, and it will hold our emergency guest speakers like our fire department to Street, like show what happens in an emergency in your home. Our activity center and lounge center will hold other guest speakers and ha like serve as a cafeteria and like a little hangout place for our high school age students where we have games and fun activities. Our employment and volunteer opportunities. We will have a lot of high school students come after school to be able to volunteer, but before they can volunteer, we have to have two reference letters from their teachers at their school. And they will also have a background check to make sure that they are all good. And then as they can volunteer, they have to be, they go through training to get CPR certified. So it will be very safe for them to be around all the children. Um, we have lots of partnerships and donations. We have done a lot of research and asked questions to all these places. The Dream Center, the Elkhorn City Food Bank, Stanley Lawn Service, Marbon Fire Department, Miller Fire Department, Kentucky State Police, Elkhorn City Library, and the Family Resource Centers. All these places will help us provide toys and just money and food and all the things that we need to get through with our center. With our funding, we've also done so much research on this and been able to learn a lot through this also. The Family Child Care Provider Grant is $5,000. Te technology Grant Application is $1,000. Community Partnership Grant, $1,500. Child Care and Development Block Grant is $1,000. May Town Hall, $1,000. Lego Children's Fund Grant, $1,500. And we also have a lot of small business loans that will help us provide things also. Now to our budget. Our startup cost will be $15,000 to get everything started up and getting everything running smoothly. And for our annual and our monthly payments coming through after that, our electric bill will be $500, our water is $150, our license is $9, our phone is $50, our rent is $1,000, our internet would be $100, our waste removal is $38, our wages is $7,040, our, insur our insurance is $115, our nursery flights is $300, and our food is $400. We have two certified workers and two non-certified workers. Our two certified workers will be certified in infant care to be able to help all infants that if something goes wrong with them, to be able to help we will pay them $12 an hour, and the two non-certified will be paid $10 an hour. We sent out surveys to our feeder schools, as well as our community, and some of our classmates. We asked would uh, they be interested in daycare facilities in our community, and for that, we got 83.3% yeses. And we also sent out a different uh, survey to see if they would be interested in after-school care facilities. And we had 78.8% yes and 15.3% maybe. We, some other questions that we asked would, would you be interested in life skills for after school? So we had about 23 say yes, about 11 say maybe, and only about five say no. We also asked, would you be interested in your child participating in tutoring services? And that we got about 20 yeses, about 13 no, uh, maybes, and about seven no's. So then why are we important? So our business has not only solved the lack of care facilities in our community and around our community, 
but has also provided a safe, empowering, and developmental you know, environment for these kids and teenagers. Um, if you would like to learn, we're going to show you, but if you would like to learn anything else through us, there's more information on our website than we will be showing today. But let me... This is the website I've developed for our care center, and you can see our logo and our slogan, and we just have a small introduction based off of what our website is, and then it explains our daycare, our after-school care, and our staff, and how they're trained, and how they're very good people to be around. And these are just pictures showing our daycare service, after-school program, and our teenage volunteers. Here's our location and our contact information and just a little page to meet us and how we came up with this idea and um, explaining how you can apply. You can stop in and see us at this daycare for more information to apply. So some of our future plans consist of a security system, some playground equipment, um, to purchase property for expansion, some network expansion, so more partnerships and donations. And then we plan to develop an app and to also get a camera system to where parents can see live footage of their children and live updates on how they're doing. So that is our presentation. We'll now take questions. Thanks guys. <clears throat> Congratulations on getting here. Um, I have a lot of curiosities. It's a very interesting idea. Uh, I'll start it off with, you talked about the after school being free, especially if you had students enrolled in the daycare program. Is that only available as a free option to people that have students in the daycare or is it just free to everyone? Okay, so that's free to everyone. So even if you don't have a child in daycare and you just have a child that you don't wanna send home alone after school, their bus will transport them to there and we take care of them for free until you come pick them up. Okay, I have more questions, but okay. I'll pass it on for right now. <laughs> um, great job. I really appreciate the research that you did. It was very nice. Um, very good presentation and I don't have any questions. Very good. Thank you. I have more than one, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try not to take anybody else's question. Great job and great presentation. And just so I'm making sure I'm clear, you are currently operational with a facility? Um, yes, we have discussed and we're looking into, they've already gave us the prices and all that. Okay, but there, it doesn't exist today? The facility does, but we haven't started actually, how do I say, getting the startup money and everything. Okay, that, that helps the next question. When you offer free daycare to everyone. Have you considered what that does to the capacity of your building? Okay, so the daycare is only for... Uh, after school care, I'm sorry. Okay. So right now we're looking at 15 to 20 students. That's, we really want more, but mm -hmm. if, if we can't hold that many, that's why we plan to purchase our own property in the future. Gotcha. That way that we can expand and get as many kids as we can. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Great job guys, I love the confidence that you portrayed and I love the research that you've put into it. Um, what would the hours of operation be? Because clearly you all would be in, say this was to start in the summer, I'm not sure if you all are juniors, seniors, sophomores, but um, for the hours of operation, clearly you all would be in school, so would that just be the certified you know, employees that you have? How many people do you think you would need to operate throughout the day until after school? So, our op hours of operation would be five to seven. Mm -hmm. Five to seven for the daycare, and that will be your two certified employees for the nursery, and your two non-certified employees for your ages three to five. Mm -hmm. After school, um, 
you, you'll have your high school volunteers come in to take care of your um, after school kids coming in. Mm -hmm. So five to seven and then three to seven for your other kids. Okay, so would that be five to seven in the morning? Yes. Is it, okay, and so you, there wouldn't be any daycare provided from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m.? No, it would be 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Oh, okay. So I'm they can so pick sorry. up, if they have daycare mm -hmm. and after-school care, they can pick them up at the same time. Okay, and where would you like to see yourself in three years with this business? We would love to see us with a big property, as many kids as we can in the community. We would love to see many, many volunteers. And we also would love to see more partnerships. You know, this isn't just a project to us. This is getting in your community involved. We have a very small community compared to others, and I feel like we have a really tight-knit community. So anytime anybody needs something, they're here for us. And we just want to grow that and, in turn, help other businesses grow as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, it was excellent. Um, I have three quick questions, and one of them is, you said right now you have 15 to 20 students for aftercare is the capacity, and how would you select those children? Would there be an application or just first come, first serve? Um, they would need to apply and give us all their contact information and fill out some paperwork, but we would take as many as we could first come, first serve as we can. Okay, and then with your high school volunteers, how would you incentivize that? Or is there any incentive, like through the school or anything like that, that they could, yeah? So they would get community service. So we're looking for the kids that are really interested in this, not just for an opportunity to look good, but to also that, you know, they care. So we want kids that show that they care through the community. Community involvement, you know, the, the background, the reference letters from teachers. So we're really just trying to get these kids that want it, that also need it for college, and that's... Okay. I'm also curious, you said that there was an 83.3 response rate for those who wanted a daycare and then 78.8 for after school care. What was the total response rate? Like how many people responded to those surveys? I think we had 33. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Terrific, great job. Uh, I am curious about the $12 and the $10 an hour rates and how you arrived at those hourly rates. So we did a lot of research and ca compared them to all the daycares in Kentucky and you know kind of their guidelines. And we wanted to pay as much as we could afford because we know that these people, you know, they're important. We don't have a business without them. So we want to show them that we appreciate them. And we're kind of hoping that if we were, like if we, I'm sure we'll be able to expand, we'll be able to bump those prices up a little bit. But those are the best that we could compare them to the, the state of Kentucky's daycare process. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to, to think that through a little bit more in terms of you've, you've, you know why it's a, the, these folks are important. Um, I'm, I just know in, the, in our business that we're doing and so on, any more $15 an hour is kind of the baseline, honestly, to get anyone you know, to turn their head. Just giving that to you, you might want to run your numbers with maybe some higher wages in there if you find that you can't attract the quality and experience that you're hoping for for these really important roles. Um, and I just wonder too, like it, to me it doesn't seem it has to be free for everyone. I mean, I think that's really wonderful and, and would be great, but why do you feel it should be free for everyone? Our community's not the wealthiest community. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these kids can barely afford a winter coat. So if they can't afford a winter coat, then their parents are gonna be like, I don't have that money to dish out for, you know, after school care facility for you. I'd rather you just come home and then safe conditions you're already coming home in. So we're really just trying to, it's, it's, we do care about the money to some extent, but to us it's more than money. Okay. To us it's the safety of our kids. Mm -hmm. I just it seems since you're charging for the daycare, mm -hmm. that maybe there's a little something, you know, if you, if it's if it's the only way to get the business going, to maybe charge for some something afterwards too, if I'm following that right. You are charging for some of the daycare. Yeah, we are charging for mm -hmm. the daycare. Right. The okay. after school care is not because we have volunteers and we don't have to pay employees to check over the after school. Mm -hmm. I see. And then the other thing I just want to add, I loved uh, your marketing, the tagline. I think that the title, the name of your um, business is terrific, and I like the 
Uh, so I like that whole thing of, you know, bright future care center, we care for the future. Uh, that really, that hooked me in. Nice job on that marketing line. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Congratulations. Nice presentation. Just to go along uh, with what Ann just said, I think you seriously need to go back and reconsider free. I understand what you're saying. Uh, we do live in a rural community, but uh, you got to think about the future of the business. Uh, the other thing I would say is uh, you've done an excellent job on your capital uh, and expenses, but I would like to see you back back in. How many kids would it take you to sustain that business? And that goes back to the free part. You know, do you, uh, do you need to have 20 kids, 25 kids to be able to pay the expenses monthly, uh, still break even? Uh, may understand profit's not the goal here, but break mm -hmm. even certainly will, will be your goal to be able to We did do that in our budgeting with the daycare kids. Mm -hmm. And with 20 daycare kids at $140, <clears throat> we, sorry we are able to pay our monthly expenses, pay back our loans and what we need to, and also have some left over for, you know, expanding and putting back into it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to hit you with any more questions. I want to make two comments. Uh, you, you showed tremendous business insight when you said we don't have a business without these people. A lot of people who start a business don't understand that going in. The value of your employees, the quality of the employees and what they do for you is something that you seem to understand that's very important. Um, and, and something Ann brought up, and, and you're welcome, I left that question for you by the way, <laughs> about, the, about the free daycares, that's been touched on a lot. You may be able to get some of these grants to subsidize you part of the way if you do a sliding scale and people that are below the poverty line or there will be a set area where they don't pay and you may be able to get some grants to cover that but just letting everyone in for free is going to be a business model as you've seen from the amount of comments on it that, that's going to irritate investors because we see money left on the table when we see that we'll take that so, in so into consideration may help you. thank you Thank you for your time. Okay, we'll continue on. Uh, before we do, though, I want to uh, acknowledge an omission that I made earlier in introductions. Uh, Brittany Mullins, uh, UPOC AV Tech, who's keeping all the mics uh, powered up. Uh, I, I just told her we couldn't do it without her and we really appreciate uh, her for being here and doing that. Uh, the next team is uh, the Craft Academy team number one. In today's world, you could say time is one of the hardest things to find. Because how many times have you heard, I have soccer practice in 10 minutes, or we need to go to the grocery store, we're out. Now more than ever, people are struggling to find time to keep things clean in their homes. And when you're in a rush to get out of your house, you just really don't care if it's clean. You might drop a chip on the ground and just kick it under your counter, or spill a drink and just barely wipe it up. These messes we leave can build up over time and get out of hand. And that's not to mention, sometimes you would just rather not clean. How many times would you rather be with your family than on the ground scrubbing your kitchen floor? Let me present to you our business idea, Squeaky Clean. Squeaky Clean is an in-home cleaning service that seeks to combine cleanliness, convenience, and compassion. 
With our service, families will have the opportunities to spend more time with each other, and our donation service lets them know that not only is their home getting clean, but someone else's is too. Families will be able to register their homes on their website and get an estimated price and then book their purchases. After that, one of our hired specialized cleaners will accept a job and take our cleaning van to the location and make their homes spotless. The next part of our business is our donation service that comes what is called our bubble bar. This is a section on our website that progressively gets filled after one of our customers books a job. Once the bar is filled, we will complete a big charitable act. These projects can range from cleaning impoverished homes, local daycares, or large community centers. Our team's business seeks to encourage community engagement and by providing a convenient and affordable service for those who can afford it. Now, you may be wondering, where did we get this idea? All of us here today are involved in the HGA revitalization project in Wolf County. We got to reach out to local community members and see what they actually needed. The community really said that they needed their homes cleaned and that they would like other things around the area to be cleaned too. So we invented our idea, Squeaky Clean. Hi, my name is Aubrey Watson and I'm our team lead. Beside me is M. Dolan and she is our community, no, sorry, development supervisor. Emma Laney is our community outreach coordinator. India Young is our tech lead and Alex Love is our chief financial advisor. So, sorry. So Squeaky Clean's marketability is based mostly in our convenience, affordability, charitability, and the lack of other options around Wolf County. Our target customers are middle and upper class citizens of Wolf County who want to give back but just don't know where to start. Um, our marketing strategies will rely mostly on posters posted throughout the community, as well as a posting on the city's website and social media presence. Our company operations will be focused on marketing campaigns, data collection from our completed services and surveys, and overseeing employees' operations day to day. Our major risks include customer retention and satisfaction, employee variability, and logistics and scheduling. Our short-term goal is to improve the families we, the lives of the families we work with day to day, but also to positively impact other communities all throughout Appalachia in the long term. Our two possible competitors would be personal cleaning, which is doing it yourself at home, and Rowlett's cleaning service, which isn't stationed in Wolf County. While these two competitors provide two of the four areas, Squeaky Clean not only provides free price estimates, but also deep cleanings. We are conveniently located in Wolf County and provide an easy way to give back to the community while getting the things you need to done. All right, hi everyone. Um, my job has largely been reaching out to people and organizations in Wolf County to see how our project can help the community in the best way and trying to get the community involved in our project. So I've talked to several different people in Wolf County, but my most informative contact has been the mayor of Campton, which is the county seat of Wolf County, uh, Kathy May. Um, when I presented our idea to her, she was thrilled. She said that there weren't really any cleaning services in Wolf County and that she and her friends had been looking for something like this for quite some time. And she really believed that our project could be very impactful and can help bring the community together with our giving back. Um, I also talked to a lady over at Campton Elementary's Family Resource Center, and she agreed that our project could definitely be beneficial to the Wolf County community. Um, she admitted that there were lots of kids in the community that were very underprivileged and that lots of families could benefit from our service projects. So some of the service projects we've considered endeavoring are cleaning up nursing homes, cleaning daycare centers, cleaning community um, facilities, homes of low-income individuals, and more. Um, along with this, the mayor requested that we help clean up the shelters at the Red River Gorge. Um, the gorge is one of the main attraction sites for Wolf County, and it's the greatest source of tourism for the area. So keeping that area clean can help bring tourists um, into Wolf County. Lastly, I've been looking into um, different partners for us to partner with in service projects. So one place we've considered partnering with is the school system because high schoolers are always needing service hours and it's a great idea to have the youth help give back to the community as well as the Catholic Church of the Good Shepherd which is in Campton because they also exhibit the drive to give back to the community that Squeaky Clean does. So you're probably wondering how much all this is going to cost. So our initial startup is around $14,000. 
This could be broken down into three main purchases, that being our storage facility, our transportation, and our equipment. Keep in, line, keep in mind that we already have $5,000 in guaranteed grant money from the Steely Reese Foundation. That, coupled with uh, the local partners, can bring our, our estimated initial costs down to next to nothing. So for our prices, we plan to charge $125 for one to two bedrooms, $175 for three to four bedrooms, $225 for five to six bedrooms, and anything after that will be $50 per extra added bedroom. We estimate that each room will take 30 minutes to an hour to clean, and if we have workers, for our workers, we tend to pay $10 an hour. So for our average job, we intend to pay, or our average job will cost $175 for the customer. So that'll be $40 in workers' fees, $10 in estimated supply fees, and $10 in gas prices. That leaves us with $115 in profit. Times that by 30, which will be our estimated number of jobs per month, and we get $3,450. Now we take away our monthly expenses, which would be $200 for the Ford building upkeep, and $100 for our van upkeep. That gives us $3,150 a month. Now, if we divide that by two, we get $1,575 to go for expansion and $1,575 to go to our bubble bar charitable acts. So just to reiterate what I said, uh, after one month, we'll get $3,150 in uh, projected income, and after one year, $37,800. And split in half, that is uh, $18,900, $18, half of which will go to um, the charitable act, the bubble bar, and half of which, half of which will go to expansion. Now to talk a little bit about our website. Whenever you go to develop a website that directly connects with the business, you wanna ensure that the website is number one, user friendly, and number two, very clear and concise. And that's exactly what we want to exhibit to you today. So on our main homepage, there's a description about what Squeaky Clean is, if anyone is still just a little bit confused, as well as they have contact info and a ultimate button that takes you to get a free estimate. From there, we have other different sites that include our About Us and Meet the Team, our Frequently Asked Questions site, which has different questions that our customers may ask from time to time so that you can go directly there to see what customers are looking for. Um, we also have our Bubble Bar feature that we've mentioned a few times underneath our service. So that is directly coded to appear once we start developing profit, and that will keep our customers updated on when our next service project will be and what we plan to do with those proceeds. Um, during our service tab, they are also able to online book through a phone or through a home computer. And one of the coolest features I'd like to talk about with our website is our direct chat option. So that allows any of our customers that have any questions, comments, or concerns to directly chat with one of our five co-founders without having to go through the long process of finding an email address and sending an email. Squeaky Clean is dedicated to combining cleanliness, convenience, and compassion in order to directly impact the town of Wolf County. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Uh, very nice presentation. I guess the one question that, that comes to mind, you mentioned competition. Um, and we all uh, know that uh, Red River Gorge is becoming more of a destination for tourists. Who's doing the cleaning there now? There's a lot of cabins being built. Um, um, uh, you know, who, who's taking care of these facilities at this time? So currently, um, they're using park services employees, which there are so many shelters among the park that they can't fully clean them well enough to where it's optimal for visitors. So we would just add an, like, additional staff to help clean them more thoroughly. Okay. Thank you. The other thing, uh, question I had, you in your startup cost, you had storage facility. Is that being purchased or leased? So we plan to use the Ford building at HGA since we're located in Wolf County. And currently there's mold in it. And the estimated price to clean it out would be $9,000. So that's where the $9,000 initial cost would come in, would be just cleaning out the uh, Ford building. OK. Thank you. Yeah. But um, sorry, just to add a little bit. The only thing that we would need to pay monthly would be like utilities, which would just be electricity and water. Um, and also HGA is Hazel Green Academy, which is something that the Craft Academy already has a lot of uh, pull in. All right, terrific job. I love that logo. Great stuff and the KY there at the end, nice touch. Um, I would maybe encourage you, maybe you said it, I missed it, but if there is just some other way to convey quickly the charitable aspect of what you're doing, whether it's in the logo or a tagline or something like that. Um, uh, just curious, so would your clients be able to help decide who gets 
the charitable part? We actually took that into consideration. We were thinking about sending out a survey to all of our previous clients to um, sort of give them a couple options of our service projects, because we have plenty, um, and just see which one had the most need in the community. Okay. Thank you. And to add on what you said, um, our, slogan, our slogan for our company is the cleaning service that gives back, and you can see that in the very first slide. Thank you, well done. Um, I am curious that when it comes to your estimates, do you include what you do and what you do not do as far as a level of clean? So until we can like go to the house and see how dirty it really is, we can't really estimate how much the cleaning supplies will cost. So a rough estimate of $10 will be uh, gloves, trash bags, clean, like uh, carpet cleaner, stuff like that. That's just our rough estimate. Until we can uh, gauge how dirty the actual room will be, that's why it's sort of an estimate right now. I would possibly think through like what level of deep clean and that you're willing to do and everything, because that could be substantially more time, finances, yeah. and all of that. Just It'll definitely be something we take into consideration. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. Also, whenever our customers go directly to our website and they click our estimate button, you might be able to see it. Um, it's on the very top of the home page, um, but whenever they go in, they will be able to submit whatever they like. So we do have a photo option that is still being coded right now, um, but they can submit photos of the spaces they'd like to be clean, and that's how we kind of get their rough estimate, and then they'll have their actual estimate once we get there and are on site. Thank you. Of course. Great job, guys. Um, so I have a couple of questions. One, you mentioned that you would be cleaning the Red River Gorge. That's more of like commercial cleaning. So would there be a separate price that is differentiated from the residential to the commercial? So that's actually a part of our Bubble Bar Charitable Act. So that, uh, that, that would actually not be charged. That would be one of the acts we give back part, as part of the compassion part of it. So there'd be no charges. It coming from the expenses that we have left over. Okay, and what is your marketing strategy? I may have missed that, or maybe it wasn't covered enough, but what, what would your full marketing strategy be? Just your website, would you be doing things going around the community, giving out posters, social media? Um, so we will have a presence on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, um, but we will also be posting flyers around the community as well as we already have an assured spot on the city's official website. And my last question, now you said uh, you'll be employing high school students. Would those, I know some of those would be volunteer for like service hours. W who would actually be getting paid the $10 an hour? Um, just our actual like hired specialized employees that, that we take through like all the like uh, hiring process, sorry. Yeah, the high schoolers would just be coming for volunteering with like the service projects. They wouldn't actually be going into people's homes to clean. Um, but yeah, they would help us with the charitable projects like cleaning daycares and nursing homes and that sort of thing. Okay, thank you so much. Great job, guys. Thank you. Great job. I think the presentation was fabulous. I love the website. It's very well developed and it's awesome. Um, I especially like the chat feature where I might be able to say, well, what about this or what about that? I think that's great. Um, just a question, and it came up in another presentation as well, your $10 an hour wage did you compare that to um, other cleaning services? I know there's nothing around, but other cleaning services or other sort of... Um... So most cleaning uh, services charge around like 11.75, which was our competitors, you know, uh, some of which Walmart also does a cleaning supplies, but there's no Walmart located near it. So $10 an hour we thought would be a rough estimate, which could vary, but it, for a side job, like a part-time job, we felt that it was a comfortable amount compared to our competitors. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I really do like the chat feature as well because people are in a hurry and sometimes it's much easier just to send a fast chat, so I really like that. Um, you did a great presentation. I really do like the bu bubble bar. I thought that was really cute um, and that you are giving back to the community, but these large jobs, you could really make some money for your business that way too. So. I know you mentioned nursing homes, you know, you know, is that a per room charge? Um, have y'all, or is that just community so service or? We do, we did take into consideration that these large projects would bring a lot of money in for a company, but we're less focused on bringing in profit and more just impacting the community. Okay, Thanks guys, it was a, a great presentation. Congratulations on being here. 
Did, did I misunderstand, or did you say that the work you're going to do at Red River Gorge would be part of your charitable work? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as a business person, um, I, I'm, I would encourage you to possibly reconsider that. It seems like that could be your biggest client, and there should be a good you know, inflow of money through those, those types of businesses. So you're not dealing with the impoverished when you're dealing with, with tourism. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you said that you're going to use 50% of your net profits for expansion? Is yes. that correct? That seems like a very aggressive expansion plan. Can you describe your expansion plan a little bit? So because uh, we have such a 1575 for expansion uh, a month, our, our plan is to first buy more vans and then expand outwards for the community. But this could also serve as just a, a pilot model for what other businesses, or not other business, other organizations could use to help impact other communities. And that money would go to further expanding not just our business, but the idea of giving back through a charitable cleaning service. So you're possibly going to use part of that for charitable acts as well? Yeah. It's also a possibility to um, sort of draw our vision. Once we impact the community to an extent that we feel comfortable with, we could also draw our vision more towards making more profit. That way we can expand and impact more communities as well. Thank you. Thank you. Could we look at the um, costs again? Okay. Just curious about. Uh, I'm not. A, I don't know. I'm not an expert in this stuff. But do you do you need insurance if you're going into people's homes and businesses and so on? Is that in here somewhere? The um, additional fees that we would be covering monthly is is kind of vague, but that we included our insurance in that. So during our we can take that out of our uh, forward building upkeep or our van upkeep, since those are both estimates. Those numbers are so high just because in case there is certain insurance uh, charges, that'll come from those for our monthly uh, prices. Thank you. Thank you. I have one last question. So currently, I, I think that you all identify more of a, as a local business. In three years, what would, where would you like to see yourself more regionally, statewide? What's your, what would your... Uh, growth plan look like there? So our, like, after we settled in Wolf County and we developed, we wanted to go to counties like Breathitt County and the other surrounding counties around Wolf, and eventually we said we would like to see ourselves not only in Appalachia, but all across the state and maybe even out of the states. Okay, thank you. Hey, just real quick, what is HGA? You said? It's the Hazel Green Academy. Craft Academy has a project there. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we'll move on. The next team is the Craft Academy team number two. starting the time oh okay perfect um, hi my name is Josie Traver and um, I'm representing the craft Academy and I'm Jennifer wing and I'm representing craft welcome to Wolf County Kentucky imagine a town without um, a single traffic light only Dollar General is available rather than Kroger or your local Walmart only 6.6% of the 6,400 residents obtained a bachelor's degree or higher, according to the U.S. Census in 2022. Compared to Kentucky's medium income, which is $55,000, Wolf County falls to $24,000. 
According to U.S. News and World Reports, 75% of Wolf County students are economically disadvantaged. The total enrollment of students in Wolf County High School is 369 students, meaning 277 aren't financially secure. Out of three total schools within the District of Wolf County, the college readiness average was reported as 0%. Imagine, everyone knows someone like Emily. She's a student at Wolf County High School struggling to plan for her future. As one of the 277 economically disadvantaged students, she works two jobs to meet her family's needs. She aspires to be a nurse, but her school doesn't provide adequate college readiness support. The closest community college is over an hour away, and no hope is left for Emily, and she will never fulfill this dream. However, this brings us to our solution. In the heart of Hazel Green is a small cluster of buildings not in current use. Emily discovers the Hazel Green Academy Educational Outreach Center, a three-phase initiative bringing education back to this closed down campus. Our project represents endless possibilities for this community. Our initiative is using the admin building that once held classes in order to provide college readiness, career preparation, and so many more opportunities for these residents. We've already seen the life-changing impacts of a short-distance education option for many like Emily. Our solution consists of three phases. Where phase one will take place in the spring, where we'll plan to hold skills and educational courses for the community. We've already partnered with Joanna Oldfield, a holistic medicine instructor and RN, um, who will teach classes to the community. Classes will start off free online, but once we gain traction, after a few weeks, they'll be at a cost. The revenue will be incorporated into our initiative. We're bringing GED education back to the Hazel Green community with phase two. We'll be partnering with Wolf County Public Library to hold free GED prep classes two to three times a week in the fall of 2024. These two hour classes taught by librarian and former KYAE staff, Julie Hendricks, will prepare those for the exam. She'll also be helping us administer the exam free of charge for the first time takers. With the Kentucky Adult, Adult Office for Adult Education, KY Skills Youth Fee Waiver Program, these residents can take the GED for free. For phase three, 2025, we will bring all of our efforts to life with, with the audience and GED grads gained from phases one and two. We will partner with the KY Community and Technical College System to integrate Hazel Green Academy campus for college classes. We have already contacted the Council for um, Post-Secondary Education President to find the best match school and plan to meet formally. Having a closer campus would allow underserved community members like Emily this wonderful opportunity. So for our company structure, I am the current COO or Chief Operations Officer. I oversee the marketing, social media, and website management for the company. When it comes to connection and getting the word out, I'm your person. From social media planning to website management, I'm in charge of the daily operations. So I oversee um, expenditures and revenue, and um, I am the Chief Financial Officer, and I analyze the financial strengths and weaknesses of our initiative, and I am responsible for our just financial decisions. And so we've intensively researched potential competitors when launching our initiative, and we found that there aren't any institutions within an hour's drive that offer the same resources as us. Um, and so we plan on partnering with the Kentucky Technical um, Community Technical College System, as well as the Wolf County Library. And through these partnerships, um, Wolf County residents will have access to community college classes and will be able to explore several career paths that um, the community technical college system offers, such as business administration, engineering technology, and cosmetology, and there's several others that they can. And through the Wolf County Library, they will have tutoring services, ACT, SAT, and st study aids to help them um, become successful academically. For our marketing, we have three main strategic priorities content strategy, advertisement, and metric and analysis. All three of these components ensure that outreach is expanding and company success is gauged. We can elaborate more on these components during the Q&A. For our community outreach, we are focusing on two main outreaches, so community outreach and then donor and alumni outreach. For community outreach, we've already had big success with Facebook and Instagram content creation, and we have about 1,000 um, engagement on each post that we make. For our alumni and donor outreach, um, we are establishing LinkedIn and email and order an email list in order to communicate with 
um, potential donors and to seek professionals for our courses. Um, for our website, our website has five main navigational tabs, as you can see. The first three give further detail on HGA's history and our initiative. Our last two, the most important, the Get Involved and Contact Us, support operation and growth as it connects our users to current events, all social media, and a donation link. Um, as you can see, we have a pretty um, open-ended and easy user interface for our website. And so for our operating budget, this will um, fluctuate um, based upon the phases that we go through. And so um, operating budget for phase one, um, as stated previously, we will be hosting informational sessions and life skill classes free of charge initially to residents. Um, our main expenditures include basic utilities that are listed including the um, cleaning necessities and HVAC and utilities. Um, first year, it will be $14,360 $14, per year and subsequent years following will be 10360 per year. So for phase two, um, stated previously, um, is centered around GED preparation, and tutoring for GED classes will be covered by Julie Hendricks, um, the former employee for Kentucky Office of Adult Education. Um, textbooks will be a personal purchase for students who choose to enroll in these tutoring classes. Um, and we plan to secure a grant from the Kentucky UV waiver program and this waives the price of the first GED test that residents will take and is renewable. And so the total operating expenses will remain roughly the same as phase one. Um, and we mainly hope to increase interest in implementing the community college courses as um, the partnership with the KCTCS. So for phase three, um, the Kentucky Commu Technical Community College will be um, utilizing the administration building um, on Hazel Green's campus as a building of their own. And so learning aids will be provided, including smart, board, um, smart boards and computers that residents can um, utilize. Um, utilities, HVAC, and cleaning will be covered also, and furnishing will be um, handled by borrowing furniture from Moorhead State University or Hazard Community Technical College, which both have furniture that isn't in use anymore. Um, however, we need to take into account renovation expenses, um, as the building needs to be fully ready to use when we begin hosting classes. And so. Notice that the subse um, subsequent costs will be zero dollars after implementing phase three. And so our biggest weakness that we've identified is the overall inconsistent source of income because we're relying solely off of um, grants and donations. Um, however, we plan to um, make changes um, as you saw in the operating budget as each um, phase changes. Um, and a few sources of revenue that we use is a mailing list for the donors and HGA alum, um, Green and Gold Initiatives, Music on the Green, and um, as a partnership with the Moorhead um, State um, Research Facilities, we have a spin account where we constantly are researching for grants um, in order to apply for and obtain funding. So there are several historical buildings located across Kentucky and um, low-income areas that can be utilized um, through our initiative. And here are two examples, um, and we'd be more than happy to discuss the specifics during Q&A. We recognize the deep educational and financial disparities in Wolf County in our initiative to solve them. We ask for a chance to advance past regional pitch to implement this initiative on a wider stage. Advancing isn't just a stopping point, but a fire that will continue to burn as we further our vision for disadvantaged residents. Just this year, we've garnered full support and funding in establishing a 501c from the Joe Craft family and $28,000 in grant funding. As Roy Rogers, board member and HGA alumni has stated, this effort would fill the educational gap that closing HGA made. With the steps we've taken so far and additional support, our project will be able to serve Eastern Kentucky individuals um, like Emily to see a future of hope, success, and most importantly, education. Thank you. Thank you all. That was a very uh, fun presentation. Great job. Uh, congratulations on being here. So you're not going to charge any tuition ever. Is that correct? Um, so for the community college classes, um, 
we will be um, we will be charging tuition, but for the life skill classes, um, initially starting, and that will consist of several um, herbal classes and um, life skill classes such as that and historical sessions, that won't be um, charged to residents in um, phase one. Yes, it will be. Um, it won't be charged at first, and as we kind of gain traction yes. from that, and we get more of a clientele for these classes, we will be charging and reinvesting that revenue into our business. So. Okay, so just at the beginning, you're not going to be charging on those classes. Yes, yes. in phase one, we will not be charging. And you've already gotten some grants to cover part of that early operating cost, where you're not going to be charging. Mm -hmm. Yes. And do you have teachers for those classes? Um, yes, we do. We. Um, as Jennifer said, um, we previously have talked to Julie. Um, um, I'm Joanna. Oh, okay. Joanna, and um, she is a life skills um, teacher, and she um, is willing to come down and start um, um, our next. She's um, wanting to start classes as soon as she can. And she's volunteering to do that, or she'll be a yes, volunteer. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all. So it's very disheartening that in your research that you found that zero percent. Uh, the students are college ready and that's it's, you know, I really enjoy your initiative I think it's very important for the community uh, the only thing I know you talked about uh, doing some SAT ACT prep at the, the library um, so who would do that tutoring do you have any teachers lined up to do so that? that would be um, Julie Hendricks would be helping out with that um, she um, used to work for the Kentucky adult education um, department and she would be volunteering her time to help out mm -hmm. with that. Okay, so it's all volunteer yeah. and there would be no charge to the... Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. When I saw this at the uh, district, I was amazed by it and I still am. I think it's a great mission and I appreciate the time and the effort that you've put into to everything that you've done so far. I want to go to phase three for a second for the um, community and technical college mm -hmm. aspect of it. When you, when KCTCS becomes involved, I assume that means that they will, they will use that building as a campus location, yes. correct? And so will they be responsible for the, um, the upkeep, the anything they need, technical wise, would they be purchasing equipment for classes, those sorts of things? Yes. That's, Part one, second part. Well, I'll let you answer that, and then I'll yes. go to the second so, part. I'm oh, sorry. So um, yes, the, um, the admin building will be utilized, um, as you said, by um, the technical college, and everything within that is now their responsibility, and so that mm -hmm. they will be overseeing everything, expenditures and revenue. Okay. So the second part of that question: um, How will students who are based on your research, not prepared for college, meet the admission requirements for KCTCS to be able to take advantage of those classes. Is there a plan there? Um, so for the um, preparation um, for standard um, general education requirement courses, um, they have to meet a certain ACT score. Mm -hmm. um, so in either math or reading, depending on the class. And with our GED preparation and additional tutoring resources, which we're partnering with Wolf County Public Library to um, have, these will be able to prepare them and the adults who seek these classes. Great, so. thank you. Great job, guys. I love the initiative. I think it's a wonderful idea and very, very needed coming from a small town myself with no stoplights either, so I totally understand that. Um, so my question is, um, I love how you have broken everything down into phases, but what does that look like? Will you be operating on the same schedule as like a community college where you have a, like the enrollment begins in the spring and you kind of phase out from there? What does that look like? Is it, what, what does the calendar year look like? And is there a new enrollment period every spring, every fall? Could you go into further depth of that for me? I think it'll be the exact same as, um, we actually, we honestly haven't um, looked into that. Thank you for mentioning that. That's a really great question. But it will most likely be the same as um, the schedule that they hold um, within yeah. the community college. Um, our three phase plan was also structured to accommodate for that. So for phase one, we're implementing that in the spring. And then we're implementing phase two in the fall. And then the year after that, so the spring, once um, classes typically start up, um, once we have the preparations made, we can start incorporating courses. So. 
so. Okay, and who will be looking over like the applications? Is everyone accepted? Is there specific like criteria or metrics uh, requirements that need to be met to be able to apply? Um, that would be um, that would be administered and conducted by the community college that we end up um, partnering with. Mm -hmm. um, we are. Um, strictly the facility and kind of getting this on, off the ground. So Of course, great, and it's a great idea. And then my last question, is there a cap of enrollment, like an amount where you would like to stop for phase one? I don't believe so, no. Okay, thank you so much. Hello, excellent work, thank you so much. Um, I'm, two questions. I'm curious, you guys did a really good job of gauging national research as well as local and stuff like that. Have you done canvassing in the area for a community need and interest in this program. Um, could you please repeat that yeah. question? I'm sorry. Have you done canvassing in the area um, for community interest? So you've talked about like statistics nationally and even locally, but talk to locals if they want to do this and if they're interested in this. I'm, um, I don't, un I'm sorry, I don't understand um, the question. Have there been local interests from high school um, students so saying they want this or households and for like life skills courses and things like um, that? Yes, so there's okay. obviously a need in the community. Um, so we've hosted the Music on the Green event, which is um, a community promotion event and tourism mm -hmm. event that we kind of like had connected to our project. And we had um, a lot of community engagement within that. And we've kind of been able to, you know, expand and promote this um, educational outreach um, through social media. And of course, just having like personal connections, whether it's adults in the community who we know um, have struggled with, you know, um, being able to fund their post-secondary education or high school students, you know, who currently have a very limited selection of dual credit classes as I've experienced um, coming from a small town high school. So um, yes, we have gauged um, community support and interest. Okay, yeah. and then I'm also curious, you guys mentioned competition in the area. What about virtual competition and online competition? If there are other programs available for students? Um, so there are other programs available for students virtually, but the main thing that we are hitting on is local. So a lot of times with um, community members who have limited access to technology mm -hmm. and funding, they want a close proximity option for education. And having it online can compli complicate things and also makes the class, um, the course selection um, a lot narrower. So just having this in person, having that in-person instruction is a lot more valuable to us than um, you know, with the competition, so we're addressing that. Thank you so much. All right, great idea, and congrats on how, what you've advanced already with it. Okay. Um, I wanna make sure I understand, so you've got, I, I remember seeing the LinkedIn and the, some of the marketing things, the Facebook mm -hmm. and so on, and I know there's a reference to a website, it, and I'm sorry, I'm just not clear. Is there a website? Yes, okay, there is. There is. There is. Okay. Um, and can people, I'm so, did I miss it in here? Is, was there, did, should we just go look at it ourselves or was it shown up here? Oh, yeah. Do you wanna go back to that? So um, yes, we can show it. I'm just trying to remember if there was, could people actually sign up on the website? Um, we had a QR code at one point in time. Yeah, so the sign up, um, so the sign up would be in the get involved tab. Um, what we displayed is the most valuable tab on our website. So the contact us where they can kind of get engaged with our media where we're promoting the events and then donate of course, because um, our um, organization does rely on donations. So mm -hmm. yes, we do have a sign up. Okay. Um, and if I'm clear, so you're already running some things here, like you're get, the money's coming in have people how many people have you actually impacted already do you do you know like how have they actually taken some done anything classes wise yet or anything yes or? okay so um during um a few events that we posted um one was being music on the green um we took a survey of like the number of people from several different counties that came um each night for nine weeks and uh, i think i'm pretty sure um we have like a whole document on excel um but the average counties were um between um 16 and um, 20 that came each night. And so we've attracted engagement um, through that. And over the um, nine week span of our event, our, of our music event that we held there, um, I believe we had over 100 counties um, come out and represented. So we are getting outside um, outreach mm -hmm. and support for this initiative. And um, an average of 60 attendees attended each night. Mm -hmm. And so we've been getting numbers in that way too. Okay. 
Um, I just, feedback wise, I felt like at the beginning, I really got it. I mean, I was, the, the setup, the, the story, the profile you provided, and, and so on. As we moved through, I kind of got a little lost, as you can probably mm -hmm. tell. And, I'm, and some of that's probably on me, but I'm just, like when we got into the different phases, okay, I get it, there's phases, but when, like presenting those financials, I'm just not clear on which, how much, which year, for how long, after that. Mm -hmm. um, just a little feedback for you. As you, as you continue, because it seems like you're really invested in this and committed to it, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, just maybe think through how to, as you get more sophisticated, you know, and asking for more money from people, just think about how you're gonna present the ask and, yeah. uh, and, the, and the return on that. Yes, thank you so much. Thank we you for the it. feedback. We really, mm -hmm. really appreciate it. Um, I guess the, the first question, so you're in phase one now, I'm kind of picking up from what, what Ann yes. said. So, you're mm -hmm. so how many students do you currently have? So we're still in the process of um, kind of figuring out the schedule in which um, we're going to have um, Joanna come in and teach the classes and mm -hmm. everything, and then we're going to start gathering interest um, throughout the community to start um, implementing the class and seeing yeah. who all wants to enroll in everything. We're not quite to that um, part yet. Okay, so we don't have active classes at, the, uh, at this point in time, our students. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, so our phase one um, will begin in the spring once we have the class schedule made, and it will occur during our Music on the Green event. So, so far what we've done is we've gained um, support and um, clientele for our idea through um, outreach events like the one that we described, so. So how many students are you projecting to have come the first phase one, the first semester of phase one? So we're aiming for purchasing 30 desks initially, um, okay. and that's gonna be just for one class, but um, as we upsize, we're going to try and um, increase the number of students we have as we um, continue to grow. Okay, so 30, so phase one, phase two, phase three, where do you project to be by the end of phase three? How many students? Um, we project to um, have at least uh, five classrooms, so um, around like over 100 students um, in order to um, have these classes and the furniture and things like that within phase three. So this is the community college class okay. implementation. Right. The furniture would be provided by the community college that we partner with as we are serving as the facility and not the um, sole um, funders for it, so. Right. Mm -hmm. One last question. What do you perceive to be the biggest challenge to make this reality? Okay, over here first, okay. So for me, um, as stated previously, um, our revenue is, um, because it's just not uniform and we're not getting um, like a set amount every single month, that's very difficult. However, we have the numbers, we have the support, we have community interest, and we've um, garnered those numbers, and we, like I said, we have $28,000 in investments, and people are showing a want for this fantastic initiative, and we wanna give it to them. Um, I think that um, my biggest challenge would be the scope. So as we're planning to expand this business model to other schools that might be you know, closed down and not have that um, educational outreach that we're gonna implement at the Hazel Green Academy, um, as we continue to kind of like reach out and have this started in other areas, we will have to find people um, to take initiative and you know um, host those classes and you know start up the project like we did. Um, but I think that with the support and the amount of feedback we've heard from the community, a lot of people are interested in just volunteering, you know, and volunteering for free, having classes, and just giving their time for this. So I think that it'll be um, good um, in that way. Thank you. Okay, we'll get started with the uh, afternoon session. Our first team up will be Leslie County High School team number one.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are from Leslie County High School. Today, we are here to share a business idea with you that will enhance the success of small businesses in our community and encourage the appreciation of their arts. Art is an essential part of our Appalachian culture that is often overlooked. From quilts to paintings to cast iron skillets, you can learn so much about Appalachian culture and history just through its art. Art is a univer universal language that everyone can understand. Art can be used as a method of communication that unites people by allowing us to understand and relate in ways we otherwise couldn't. This is why it is essential for art to be appreciated and admired. On April 15, 2022, we held our first ever Appalachian Art Festival as a way to showcase the talents of artists in our community who are often overlooked simply because of their location and background. Our festival was successful on most fronts, but as our goal is to make our festival an annual occurrence. All right, so next we're gonna be talking about how we identified this problem. Um, during the process of brainstorming ideas for how to help our community, we considered the festival as a way for local artisans and businesses to have a wider range of customers and to increase their profit. We knew that many people within the community have diverse talents that are not highly publicized. Actually, during a conversation with some friends, we were kind of talking about this kind of stuff, if we knew how to make quilts and just stuff like that, and nobody did. Like they, and most of them didn't even know what really goes into that. Um, I mean, we wanted others to have the ability to learn how, about and appreciate our culture. Many people may not realize it all at first glance, but art is an extremely important part of understanding our history and culture in Leslie County. As students and members of the community, we found that we have many gifted artists in our community, but they seem to be a hidden treasure. The artists do not receive the recognition nor profit they deserve for their works simply because of their location. In order to spotlight our local artists and to increase their revenue, we decided to create an Appalachian Art Festival. At the festival, local artists can set up booths to showcase and sell their art. The festival will complete with concessions, food trucks, and live music. The Appalachian Art Festival will be an annual event. Our goals for the festival are to expand and grow our festival each year. And in order to bring light to the local artists and art while also increasing their consumers and revenue, not just at the festival, but beyond it as well. Now for our business plan. So the product that this um, Appalachian Art Festival provides is various types of vendors and arts. Our vendors also offer teaching to the audience so they can learn and become more aware of the art that is within their community. The festival also offers live music, concessions, and food of our cultures like soup beans or cornbread, which is very popular at our last festival. Um, we also offer bids and silent auctions that can create a profit and revenue, and other interactive ac activities that may be engaging for younger audiences. The marketability of this product is that um, since many schools don't prioritize the education of the arts anymore and they've kind of removed removed it from the curriculum. This gives a chance for the younger audiences to become more aware and educated about the arts, and especially the arts about their community, which is our culture and our history. Um, the festival offers many products made by our local vendors that contribute to the appreci appreciation of the arts. These products can range from locally made baked goods to hyper-realistic paintings. Not only is this festival for adults, but is very engaging for younger audiences. This company operates with each vendor having an individual booth so they can set up their products and um, provide their teachings. Concessions and snacks will have a separate booth located near the front. All booths will be labeled so therefore the audience can um, have a very direct path to what they want to buy. Live music will be set up towards the front on a separate stage and the pavilion will be decorated so it can be pretty for the vest festival. The risk of this festival is not having a large audience because obviously if you don't have a large audience, you're not gonna have revenue or a profit. Um, vendors not making sufficient profit, they come there to create a different source of revenue and to get revenue back from the cost that they spend on their arts. Not being able to reserve the Osborne Brothers Pavilion, which is where we're located. Not having vendors wanting to come to the festival not having sufficient funding, and the difference in vendor profit based on customer per preference. 
The sales anal analysis and forecast is, since the festival committee is a 501c3 nonprofit, we will make money for future festivals and teaching sessions through concessions, asking each vendor to donate an item through auction, and various grants such, a, such as the South Arts and These Mountains project program. More vendors will want to participate in this program if they see that others are making profit off of it, and more people will want to attend the festival. Capital requirements for this is the location, of course, which is the Osborne Brothers Pavilion. The host is the place members, but this also supplies opportunities for other groups such as Gear Up and the National Honor Society. Vendors are the local artisans who want to showcase their arts and goods. Um, the startup funds for this is $500 worth of donations and concessions for decoration, $500 ad for advertisement, and $200 for teaching sessions. The finances of this for last year was we earned $187 in total, earning a total of $117 after expenses, such as pur purchasing food to sell, and the artisans were able to, smell, to sell and made an average of $100. This year, we plan to expand these revenues and profits and to allow the artisans to make more money. The goals for this is having more vendors and live music to draw in a bigger audience and therefore earning more profit. Publicizing the festival on social media and throughout our local community will help to draw in more attendees. This festival will ultimately share and love the appreciation of the Appalachian arts. So our website starts out with showing what our mission is to help the local community. It also tells you about how to become a vendor at the festival. You can go down and there's these clickable links that actually work so that you can go and you can apply or contact us for any further questions. This is some of the local vendors from last year's. This is Miss Melton where she makes dream catchers and I actually have a dream catcher that we made with her last year at the festival. All of the links for all of the t vendors are actually workable and you can click those and you can actually go and you can contact them if you have any questions or would like to place orders. There's some realistic paintings by Miss Carol and then there's some earrings and some candles. This is some pictures from last year from when we did the festival. We have music, there's us making dream catchers and then all of the sorts of other stuff. This is our location where it is shown and where you can go to find it on Google Maps. All right, so next we're going to be talking about the impact of the Appalachian Art Festival. So the Appalachian Art Festival and its website are a great aspect for promoting and selling the diverse variety of products our vendors assemble. The festival can create opportunities for our artisans to showcase their talent and expand their businesses. This assists in helping the festival attendees to appreciate and understand the beauty of Appalachian culture. These people may even be prompted to share what they learned to like their friends and family and even develop a new hobby. And at the last, for the growth of our business, at the last festival, we experienced a problem with advertising. So like we didn't really have a big amount of foot traffic. So we hope to, with better advertising and publicity, we hope to like expand that and maybe bring like some extra stuff like a, to make more profit, like a food truck, live music, just stuff that the attendees will enjoy. Thank you for listening to, to our idea today and you all have a good day. Okay, thank you. Very nice. Uh, congratulations on having an event and being profitable. Might have been a small profit, but, but you was profitable. Um, couple questions. First, how are you going to improve the marketing, which is, which is always a key for a festival. How are you going to improve the marketing this festival? Um, we're able to have social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram throughout the school district. So we have the elementary schools and the high school. And we also can put flowers uh, throughout the community. We also have running, working social medias as we speak as a separate Appalachian Art Festival. Just a comment, you've done an excellent job on identifying the risk that you have in this festival. I, I would say one thing that you would need to look at what the rewards 
for, for identifying them risk and, and being able to uh, take care of the risk to where they don't affect the festival, uh, which will affect your profit, obviously, at the end. Uh, and obviously, if you could use the Osborne Brothers in your advertising or marketing this festival would be, and I don't know if you can, but would be beneficial. Thank you. All right, yes. Uh, so you, you've got an advantage here. You've actually got some history of something that you've created, so congrats on that. And um, I love the, the emphasis on the culture and the history along with the art. I think that's terrific. Um, how, so the artists that you had, I'm curious, <clears throat> when I saw that they made about $100, um, that seemed pretty good to me, for starters. Were, were those all the artists that you showed on the website, or were there more artists in the actual event? There was more of them. That is just the sum that volunteered to be able to come with us to the website that was okay. for this, yeah. Got it. And um, just a little bit of feedback. I was so happy to, to see pictures like when you got to your website. And in terms of making your pitch to people and looking for sponsors and all, I encourage you to think about using photos earlier on um, rather than you know, this, having the same thing on the screen that you're telling us. Uh, but just this is art, right? So you've got all kinds of great uh, assets to work with, especially since you've already done one. Um, and I would encourage you to maybe talk to the artists and get some quotes from them about how this impacted you know, their business and so on. Um, and, uh, and also get feedback from them on how to improve each year. Like what do the artists need to, for you to be able to serve them better and, and uh, also the folks who are coming to the show, uh, to the event, but terrific. Hello, well done, um, thank you. I just have a few questions. I was curious how many artisans participated in the festival that you've had last year or this year, I'm not sure when it was. There was about 10 or 13. Okay, and how many people attended as far as foot traffic and otherwise? There wasn't many foot trafficking, I guess that's why, but that's why we was wanting to do social medias and bring more attention to the festival so that we could have more foot traffic. Mm -hmm. Have you guys considering partnering with other organizations that also do this, like Berea has a large um, Appalachian artist um, presence in other places in Kentucky as well. Have you considered it or look into it at all? We have considered, uh, I think, actually talking with, uh, what is the place in Cumberland? They're at Artisan where they make it's in Cumberland. Mm -hmm. They have a building. Yeah, they have a building and we, we've talked about doing mm -hmm. stained glass and stuff with those. Huh? Will and Hearts, I think is their name. Very well. It could just draw more attention to your program as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm also a lover of art, so I think it's amazing. So um, in terms of how many, um, that, I know it's already been discussed, how many vendors that you had, how do you plan to market and entice more vendors to, to participate next, next year? Well, one thing that we did for the initial festival, which was last year, we went around the school and asked teachers to offer bonus points. So that increased the foot traffic of students. And of course, students are the younger generation so they have grandparents and parents that may want to attend this year. So that is one way, but we also put out flyers and post. Have you considered outside of social media, maybe getting in touch with like a local news station, maybe getting on the radio and maybe letting them interview you uh, and yes. get out the word that way too, I would recommend. We were going to put an ad in the local newspaper. That's awesome, okay, good luck. Great job and congratulations on your festival. I have um, chaired some festival committees and I know that those are not easy to get off the ground. So you are 100% steps ahead. Um, most of the questions that I had have been asked. The only thing um, I'd like to hear from you sort of concisely is your revenue model. So I got concessions and what else? We have bids and silent auctions that the attendees can bid on, and that's a source of profit. Um, we've also talked about percentage from the vendors. Of course, that would not be anytime soon because we do have to increase our foot traffic, but potentially the projection of this festival, we may charge um, attendant 
fees and take a certain amount of profit from the vendors, depending that, on how big that gets. That's kind of where I was going. In order to sustain it and make it larger, you may want to consider charging uh, admission. And, and again, that's maybe when you're down the road and you get it built up to where there's foot traffic. But also, instead of maybe a percentage from the vendors, maybe it's a, a $10 booth fee or something like that that will help cover your costs. Just something to think about. Again, great job. Um, very good presentation. I don't have any questions because all the questions that I have have been answered. Um, but just great job. Uh, great job, guys. Great presentation. Congratulations on making it here. Uh, also, I had several questions, but I've been rewriting them the whole time down through there. Uh, one of the benefits that you provide to vendors as an art festival or, or fair is getting them higher foot traffic than they would get on their own. Of course, Leslie County, Hyden's, what, an hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes off of I-75. Berea has something similar to this right on 75. Then there's another place down in Tennessee that has an art museum and an Appalachian museum that has that draw of um, Sevierville and Gatlinburg. My question for you is, do you all provide, because you're going to have to draw them so far off the interstate to get this foot traffic, do you provide festival goers with any resources on where they can stay at in Leslie County, other things they can do in Leslie County, uh, just why you should come out here and how we can make it convenient for you? We have the Mary Breckenridge, which is right down the road. It's on Wendover. It's a bed and breakfast. And they also are now renting Airbnb and some of the cottages out that way. So there is places for them to stay right down the road from the festival. But do you advertise that to people, let people know about that? We have not. Okay. You may want to let, because this sounds like something that Leslie County, lo Leslie County locals would know about. You know, if you're wanting to pull people in, you're going to need to let them know where they can stay at and what they can do while they're there. Thank you. Thank you all. Sort of my wheelhouse too. Just say um, for your next festival, reach out to your local tourism, your county tourism, and get on their, their schedule so that they are also advertising for you because it would be a draw for Leslie County um, for tourism. So get on, their, get on their calendar and do it that way too. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next team will be Leslie County High School team number two. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're introducing to you the future readers of Leslie County program. Rachel Anders once stated, the journey of a lifetime starts with the turning of a page. Reading is the foundation of our everyday lives. With the event of COVID-19 behind us, we have noticed a dramatic downward spiral in our young students' reading scores. More importantly, the love for reading has decreased in recent years as well, specifically in our male students. The structure of educational standards are designed to be like scaffolding. If there's a break in the bottom, the whole structure is going to fall. This is why it is so important for students to master skills before moving on to create successful vertical alignment. If you never learn to read effectively, it can overall, in a sense, paralyze you. It will hold you back from being independent and able to do things on your own, such as read a menu in a restaurant or take a driver's test. Reading is a foundational skill. 
That is why, in order to help our rural area in eastern Kentucky, we have designed the Raiders of Lesley County organization to specifically target our young students by creating a website that will allow them to build their reading skills while establishing a new profound love of reading in their young minds. This website is different from other reading websites because it is specifically targeted toward the students in our rural area. To identify the problem further, we have seen dramatic drops in reading and grammar scores, children falling behind in reading classes, lack of reading in males, and struggles to navigate daily life. So this is our Leslie County Schools reading data. Um, so from 2018 to 2019, elementary school scores for 61.2%, uh, uh, middle school 71.7%, and high school 47%. Average gap between males and females is 10% at high school level. However, after COVID on 2022-2023, elementary schools were 54%, middle schools 54%, high school 60%. The average gap between males and females is 29% at high school level. So we hope to close the gap eventually with our business plan. What does our data tell us? So the data tells us that there is a gap between the literacy skills of males and females. There's also a decline in reading scores after the COVID pandemic and the high school scores are steady because they have already completed the literacy programs. Our data narrows our plan from three to five grades because this school, their students would have had been K through second grade. We hope to close the gap with our business plan. Here's a link to our website. This is our homepage. It starts out with just a little information about us and where we're located. As we scroll down, here's links to all our social medias and our school's website, which we're connected to. Um, we have at different parts of the website. Here's our classes. So if you're a teacher or a student, you join or are the teacher of a class, you can assign books, you can post videos for these students and any, anything that they'll need to, um, sorry. Uh, uh, any resources that they'll need for uh, the assignments that they give. Our other page here is where we're, our books are located. This is where our teachers can have the students go to look at books, have the parents check out books, or if the teacher wants to check out books themselves. We have our popular books, they're all clickable. Our series, if a teacher wants to order a series or any students interested in series, and our filter and search for any specific books that a student may want. And lastly, we have our read-along videos. This is where a teacher can guide a student towards, maybe a student has a specific interest in police work or construction. We have videos of professionals, maybe a local state officer reading a children's book in their squad car, or maybe uh, a member of our water plant reading a book about construction to the students. We also are connected with our um, ATC pathways, welding, teaching, and carpentry, if students were interested in that too. Assessing the problem. While brainstorming, we concluded that creating a reading program fit to our community was the best solution for us. This will include talking to educators, starting a test trial, and reviewing feedback from our educators and students to see how we can further enhance our service to the students that we are providing it to. Ideas for scaling. Considering our main goal is to reach as many struggling children as we can, we will begin with our four local elementary schools, starting with grades K through three, and we will expand when we are financially stable, resulting in expansion to other counties and eventually states. Our, bi our business plan consists of how we will get revenue from our business, how our business will appeal customers, 
what type of customers we are trying to attract. The alternatives competing against our program and what our needs will be, whether they are one-time needs or needs we will continually use. We want to primarily serve students in between the third and fifth grade within our community. We also want to offer this service to those that are older or younger that need these services if they are behind their reading level. We also want to focus on males as we see lower reading scores for them. Research shows females tend to read more for pleasure than males. We, we would like to focus on encouraging males to read more for pleasure at earlier ages. Our solution is better than the competition because it is focused specifically on our community and our people. We want our customers to know <clears throat> that our service will increase reading scores, reading for pleasure, and reading comprehension. We also want our customers to know that reading is the key in building blocks for life. Our message will be delivered by word of mouth and advertising. Our one-time needs. We will need a startup of $1,500, which will mostly consist of the cost of buying books to sell on our site. The initial costs will be provided through grants, revenue, and any possible investors. Also, we will need to network our, web, our website and conduct tests or program in order to obtain feedback to help guide production. Our continual needs. We will continue to use new technology that comes out so we will make our service more fun and better for those who we are serving. The cost of running a server for our website can be anywhere from $50 to $250. We will also have local businesses and people post pictures, videos, and other resources for students to use to get the building blocks that they need. And for example, I have a book with me called Pickles and Wilma that is written by a local writer within our community named Tracy Turner and is illustrated by Brianna Sizemore. We will make revenue by charging the schools $50 per month for using our program. With our sales page, our net profit from each sale will go back into our service. 5% of this money will specifically go into the program to help afford newer technology, uh, technology and methods to use. Our website will be run by our uh, place team at the school, National Honor Society, and uh, many of our different mentoring programs. Uh, so with everything, there is a few major risks. So for our business, it would be competition with other learning programs like ABC Mouse, IXL, et cetera. Um, we also may run into the local elementary schools. They may not be interested in the program or they may want to use other accessible programs and the lack of support when purchasing the books. So our alternatives, we're going to take the feedback from educators and students who are using the program and we will fit the needs of, and we will fit the needs of what they want uh, for our business to thrive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Um, great presentation. Congratulations on making it here. I want to start off, <clears throat> when you were early on in the presentation, I, I thought I understood pretty well what you were wanting to do, but as you went along, I got a little confused. Um, are you all selling books? Is it an e-reading service where people can read books on the page, or w what is the, the actual product? Our way of making the actual profit is selling books to schools. However, we have services on our website 
with uh, videos, read-alongs for students to watch as they read the physical book. So you're selling print copies of books? Yes, to schools. Okay. And then are you also, is there an e, are you selling e-books as well? Maybe in the future. It is a thought we've had, but that is with something that would come along later. Okay. And then you said there are some, some videos, yes. assisted reading, things like that. Are those all included in that $50 fee? Yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And that's per school or per student? That is per school. Per school. So an entire elementary school can use the program for $50? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Good job. Um, I have a couple questions. So I know you talked about teachers and you talked about selling it to a school. So is this something that they would implement into the curriculum they're already using or is this something that the kids would do at home or? Uh, yes, it would be both. It would be so like um, the teacher would buy it and like the school would have it for the student and then the student would also have access to it. So like with those videos, we're also planning on implementing maybe some strategies. So that's why we're trying to boost those scores so that they're actually getting to see like a welder in front of a welding machine or a firefighter in front of the car, like actually seeing those and getting to have the book, being able to read along with it. And then if the parents want to work extra on that, they have access as well. Okay, so when a school participates and does the $50, there's an additional charge per book that the school would pay? Is that how that would work? No, it would just be everything included in that one subscription. Okay. I have a follow-up to that. On your budget sheet, you said it could be up to $250 a month to run the website. Yes, ma'am and you have four elementary schools that will pay $50 a month, that is $200. How do you sustain your business if, you're, if, if all you can count on is $200 a month? What if you don't sell a book at all? That's, our, um, <laughs> I got this one. Um, that's if we have our own server and run our own server, but if we use a website like Wix or Shopify mm -hmm. and create a website through that, it'll cost less. But we won't have as much freedom on our own servers. Gotcha. The additional cutback that we'd get from the books that we'd sell uh, on the website, because the ebooks would be free and the uh, videos are free, but we also will have a link to our actual like store where you can buy books for the school itself, and that cutback would also go towards our profit and to put back into it. Gotcha. Um, what is the advantage to the school buying books from you? Where are you sourcing your books? We... Uh, we had kind of talked about maybe doing a partnership with maybe a big company like Amazon mm -hmm. or maybe even doing our local library and then it's going to be more beneficial because it's actually going to be geared toward our rural area like specifically and then mm -hmm. build from there to other rural areas and then like they mentioned earlier like through the states. So like we're going to plan to rise through that. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. I love that you've seen a need in your community and you're looking to solve that problem or bridge that gap. Um, so uh, with considering growth for this program, where would you like to see yourselves in a year or maybe say three years? How could, would you only say locally since it is, um, you know, you're so focused on it being those four elementary schools. How do you see yourself growing moving forward? I would like to see a more like increasing in standardized test scores because of those literacy, skill, literacy skills, because I can see, we, as from the data, you can see that there's that big gap. And I hope that as our business thrives, we'll be able to eventually close that gap or minimize that gap in the future. And also I'd like to expand to um, higher grade levels other than third grade. So I'd like to see more than like fifth and hopefully reach up to high school students. Possibly. Okay, and thank you for that. And are you going to stay local, or do you plan on going outside of Blaisley County? Uh, stay local. Mm -hmm. We had included that within our presentation, but we obviously are in our time. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, and congratulations on being here. Um, I was curious, when you say that you want to specifically target this area, and that's one of the benefits of the service that you're offering, or the product you're offering, what do you mean by specific? What are the things that you're doing particularly for this region compared to other things that are offered out there? 
whenever you look at a lot of curriculum, it's mainly based in like Texas or California. So a lot of the times that curriculum is based toward like that area. And sometimes for students such as like Leslie County or you know from Eastern Kentucky, it's a little bit hard to pick up because we're having to try to adapt to that. So this is actually going to be curriculum that is based towards like the language, like you're seeing kids that talk like them, that's accented like them, that's actually structured to what they're used to and what they've grown up with. Thank you. Um, I'm also curious, how do you plan to focus on males? Are there specific strategies that you want to employ? And do you know what direction you're wanting to head with that? We want to, in a way, like enhance that accessibility too, because I think there are a lot of the gender bias, and we hope to close that too with the societal expectations. Um, and closing that gaps, and we also hope to explore more strategies as we develop more strategies in the long run, and might possibly interview some educators and to help us with that as well. As for what strategies we're using now, mostly that is from the read-along videos that we have for those younger audiences who are may be specifically interested, in like you know, when you're young, you're interested in cars, trucks, mm -hmm. things like that. So whenever they see someone in a place where they want to be, they'll be more inclined to read like they see that person doing. Mm -hmm. Good ideas. So, uh, just a thought as well. Young male readers tend to like stats more, how-tos and things like that. So to incorporate even baseball cards or other things is a thought as well. But you could possibly have covered that already. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I think one of my favorite things that you proposed was that read-along video it, with the you know, folks on the job doing their thing that, to try to pique interest for folks and, and have some role models for them. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning, so there was a lot of statistics at the beginning about how you know, reading levels have dropped and the challenges and so on. And uh, I'm curious, do you have any thoughts on how you would measure your success in terms of, of if, if, is that one of your goals is to increase the reading levels, right? So yeah. how will you know if you did? Uh, yes, and we would, prop, we would take studies with, after a couple of years that we had Im implemented our program to see if reading scores have went up or not. We'd also like to check in with the teachers that are using the service and get a gauge and sort of survey them and see how our service could be helping the students or if they have any ideas as to what else we could add to it. Mm -hmm. Also checking the school report card too, like having one of us to make sure we're going on there and just checking the report card every year to kind of see and then measure throughout a, like a two, three year span. Okay. And uh, any thoughts at all on how you would address or help, or if you could, with any sort of uh, learning differences, whether it's dyslexia or something else, how does that roll into your assessments uh, of, of the levels and the success? I was thinking if with the feedback, we could make accommodations for those types of students mm -hmm. with dyslexia, um, children that have a hard time with reading comprehension. Um, I struggled with reading comprehension when I was younger, and I feel like I would want those reading comprehensions back when I was back in third grade. Mm -hmm. So I completely understand if people would want that as a choice with their subscription. So I would think with our business, we could probably incorporate that as it thrives. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just a, a question and a couple comments. I know uh, you, have, you have relayed that you have talked to educators and teachers in your area. Have you sat down with your Board of Education and asked for their support, or the Leslie County Board of Education, um, at, from a startup standpoint? I mean, this is obviously going to be beneficial to their students. Have you sat down with the Board of Education at this point? It is not something that we've presented to them yet, but we would like to very soon. Okay. Um, that could be some, some potential investment into what you're trying to do. Uh, a comment would be, uh, th this more sounds to me like a nonprofit situation than for-profit, and that might be something you want to look into. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Next up will be Ashwin Powerblazer High School. Is it okay if we go ahead? Okay. Good afternoon, esteemed judges and fellow entrepreneurs. My name is Caroline Yates, your, our business's in, informational technology director. I'm Reagan, and I'm the director of game design. I'm Izzy, and I'm the director of AI strategy and implementation. I'm Misha, and I'm the director of marketing. I'm Sarah, and I'm the director of public relations. And we are excited to introduce to you Stride Story, an innovative venture that's set to revolutionize youth wellness. Today's youth are facing a health crisis. The sedentary lifestyle has become a norm relating to various health issues. Kentucky stands as the second leading state with a disturbing childhood obesity rate of 25.5% among youth aged 10 to 17. Closer to home in the Huntington Ashland area, nearly half of the adult population faces obesity that started at a young age. This isn't merely a statistic. It reflects the health crisis enveloping our communities. The ramifications extend beyond immediate, manifesting in long-term health ailments such as diabetes, heart disease, and escalating medical costs that burden individuals and society alike. Not only this, as students, it is hard to focus on important things in life like clubs, jobs, school, and socialization when your physical well-being is compromised. The need for a viable, engaging solution is paramount. By leveraging cutting-edge technology and creating gameplay, we aim to transform daily fitness into a captivating adventure, fostering a lifelong commitment to health and wellness in our community and beyond. Our dedication lies in crafting a fun, accessible, and engaging experience that not only entertains, but educates and empowers young individuals to strive confidently toward a healthier future. Let me introduce you to the heart of our project, the Stride Story app and our wellness website. The app is an adventure game where physical activity unlocks exciting story chapters, turning each step into a thrilling journey that invites our users to feel like they are being rewarded both physically and within the game. Even though Fitness Watch is not required to enjoy the game, having one is beneficial to increasing interactivity. Advertisements throughout the city will be provided by partnering with fitness brands and healthy lifestyle businesses. Here are some images of our concept art of our gaming environment. You can also upgrade your characters and your in-game features as you progress through the game. Here are some examples of customizable characters. The next video is an example of a commercial that we will be putting out that also gives an image of our game and gameplay. Our game is paired with a website, an easily accessible hub for nutritional advice, workout plans, and community support. Parents can access the website to provide their family with a foundation for a healthy lifestyle. Here's our website. This is, it shows our mission statement on the home screen. And then we have an overview of our game and the rest of the website and just our overall business. Then here's some recommendations for enjoying our game, such as fitness watches and clothing. And then the next tab 
shows recipes that include healthy options for all types of diets. Here. Our marketing strategy is robust and multifaceted. We aim to create a buzz around Stride Story through targeted social media campaigns, influencer partnerships, and community events. We're focusing on building a strong brand presence both online and offline. Our collaboration with local schools and youth organizations will play a pivotal role in reaching our audience. Plus, our phase approach allows us to adapt and grow, ensuring a lasting impact. Our primary goal is to reach out to the affected groups in both our community and state. We'd like parents of these groups to be as involved as possible. And additionally, we plan to partner with local businesses and healthy restaurants for a mutualistic relationship within our community. In the future, we want to help people change their lifestyles to become healthier and happier. In addition, we also want to work with global businesses to grow our business to larger markets. A thorough SWOT analysis has equipped us with a clear understanding of our business landscape. Strengths like our innovative concept and strong team dynamics set us apart. We're aware of the challenges, such as the competitive digital market and need for continuous content creation. Financially, we're poised for growth. Our revenue model includes app subscriptions, merch sales, and potential partnerships. Our financial projections emphasize sustainability and profitability. Among our abundance of strengths, our platform builds foundations for child, a child's healthy lifestyle, forms mutual relationships with fitness and health-based companies, and results in a positive impact from playing a video game by getting kids up and moving instead of staring at a screen all day. Not only this, we have greatly reduced our cost for the game by relying heavily on AI. Utilizing artificial intelligence and the creation of our original product allowed us to create material and resources that would, would have been too expensive to produce, ultimately harming our company instead of advocating for growth. We were also able to reach a developed stage during game design and app education. As we develop our game, challenges will pop up everywhere. Our vision for our game is a large undertaking. And with other commitments, it's a struggle to meet and work through, um, through extensive problems. Some of this development requires expensive professional help, and there is competition from other fitness apps. Our business plan creates several opportunities, such as partnering with the community and introducing healthier lifestyles to young people. Not only this, but we are also growing awareness about health and fitness in youth to create a positive foundation for a healthier future. We will be able to reach more lives through national and eventually global expansion. As more opportunities arise, the number of issues that complicate our plan increase. When expanding our app so that more people can join, it will be a challenge to protect and handle the data of minors and their families. Also, we have up-to-date technology, and that is expensive. And meeting the public's expectations for how the product is being brought to them is time-consuming. Along with this, new or existing competitors can develop similar offers that take the playing field to a different level. We were able to self-fund our original product with minimal expenses. The key costs are the domain purchase and to get hosting in the App Store. When it came to securing resources, we utilized free, low-cost tools such as Unreal Engine, Canva, and social media platforms. Of course, there is room for expansion due to our modest beginning. The ROI on our investment will be calculated based on the original investment. The ROI is modest as we speak, but there is room for improvement and expansion. For the initial self-funding, we are focusing on the essential costs with in-house development. Projected fixed costs include a domain of $150 annually. For App Store hosting, it is projected that we would have to pay $99 annually, and for the Google Play Store, we would only pay $25 once. Marketing will continue to cost more as revenue increases. This includes technology maintenance and update costs. Inspiring healthier lifestyles among youth and families is important. We are building a foundation for our youth to make good habits that will impact them positively in the future. Stride Story isn't just a business. It's a movement towards positive change and a holistic well-being that will affect our community and beyond. Each stride contributes to transformative community impact, impacts. With our connected gaming um, environment, we are building a supportive community of wellness advocates. Stride Story is more than an app or website. It's a promise for a healthier, more active future for our youth. We're committed to making a difference, one step at a time. We invite you to join us in the endeavor. Support Stride Story, and together, let's build a community that values health, happiness, and adventure. 
Thank you for the opportunity to share our passion with you and being able to change the virtual into reality. Together, Together let's strive towards a healthier tomorrow. Thanks guys, great presentation. Congratulations on making it here. Um, I have a lot of questions. Did you ever talk about what you're going to charge to use the app? The app will be free, but all the what you'd have to pay for once you're using the app are in-app purchases. Okay, so I'm not gonna pick on you. I've been working on a team that's developing an app did any of you all look up statistics on what it costs to acquire subscribers, in-app purchases, that kind of thing? We haven't reached that stage of development yet. Um, we're still working on designing our game to its full extent, but right now, um, if you saw it in the commercial, we have a little bit of our game design, but we want people to be really interested in our app, so we need it to be developed more. I won't, like I said, I won't pick on you. I would encourage you to charge a subscription fee. You can acquire subscribers for about half the marketing expense that you can uh, acquire in-app purchases. Just getting people to register is very expensive, so you're going to need a large marketing budget going in when you're doing in-app. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great job. Um, I really enjoy your logo. Um, I like it. Um, I liked your video uh, that showcased your game. It was very futuristic. I, I liked that as well. Um, I actually had the um, question of the cost for the app. I know one of your slides showed that um, the app store was a charge of $99. Was that per month or? It's $99 annually only for the Apple store. But for the Google Play store, we only had to pay $25 once. Okay. Um, so, and you talked about competition, which, you know, there are com competitors out there. So why would we choose you? We believe that Stride Story is the best option for viewers out there because there's m multiple reasons. One of them is how family friendly and family orienting it is instead of apps like the Nike fitness app where it's basically individual improvement. But as on Tried Story, we focus on family getting together as a whole and using each other to push each other and better themselves. And secondly, ours is more engaging and will keep people interested for much longer rather than just statistics. Very good. Great job. Yay. Um, there, you had a slide that you were on for like half a second and then you switched on. It was your costs. There we go. I missed the bottom part, so I, I was going to ask you to go back to the bottom part. Three to five year revenue projections, 24,000, five year around 30. Okay, that was my biggest question, was where do you project your revenues going? And I thought it was up there, but I missed it real fast. I don't have anything else. Great job, I'm obsessed with the commercial and your logo. It's so colorful and inviting and I, I love it. Um, so with the app, um, I, I guess I'm a little more confused as the types of activities that you will find. Could you elaborate a little bit more on the types of activities? Are there levels of activities like beginner, intermediate, advanced? Could you go into more depth about that, please? I feel like there are many different types of activities you can do, um, like dancing, because we want it for youth so they can have fun and be engaged with their fitness. But also this includes running, walking, or like going to the gym, um, kicking, kicking, the, kicking the soccer ball around with your friends, or playing basketball, anything like this. Um, and it's also for a wide range of people, like beginners, and if you are very active a lot of the times, too. So it's just for everybody. Okay, thank you. And you may have covered this, and maybe I missed it when I was writing some things down, but how do you plan on marketing the app and getting people to subscribe or, or join? So we plan to, um, like, advertise our app on, like, um, platforms that children in that age range would use like TikTok or Snapchat and then our website 
we're going to promote on like Facebook, Twitter, something more like parents would use because the website is directed more towards parents to help like assist their children with like the app use. And we do also have an Instagram account for our Stride Story app at the moment. Okay, awesome. Thank you all. Thank you. Hi. Um, first of all, I'm, I love that you guys are embracing AI and just going for it. I am curious, how exactly does it work? Like, would it be paired with your phone, an Apple Watch? Does it track your movements as you go certain levels or things like that? I'm just curious about that. So it is able to be paired with a fitness watch um, to get the best experience at the app, but it's not required. Because with Just Dance, you can use your phone, you know, and then you're like waving it around. So it would be the same principle as that. And I also know other apps like Under Armour and Nike Whenever you're running, it still counts your steps and things like that. So you can also use your mobile device. Okay, thank you. Wow. You know, just in terms of the look and the feel, um, I, I feel like the questions I had have, have been asked. Uh, I am still trying to wrap my brain around the whole AI part of it. Um, I think a lot of people are in the world, right, right now. But in general, I feel like a little bit of feedback on your pitch. There's so many great elements you've got design-wise. Um, and even like, you know, I was looking through your written business model, which the, the, the depth that you went into is comparable to some of collegiate pitches and business models that I've seen in the past. Great job. Um, but I think maybe, you know, taking all that and trying to get it in up to here, maybe some things got a little left behind. Um, and because this is meant to be storytelling and, and creative, and you've, already, you've got some amazing creative work here already, I just would encourage you to think a little bit about, as you go out, try to you know, raise some money, um, to incorporate a little bit more of that into your pitch rather than, the, the, than all the writing. Um, this stuff is important too and all, but this to me is about the experience and um, you know, that commercial, like, that's pretty amazing. I'd love to hear, you know, from anyone who, have you been like testing this prototype? Do you have any feedback from a family that's been doing it that you could share? Just some things like that, because I think it's um, important to your mission that you sort of live, like walk the walk and talk the talk and all that, right? That, that uh, it's about storytelling and, and I encourage you to do a little more personalized storytelling too with this. But this is really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I'll just carry on with what Ann said and also what the first gentleman said. I, I would encourage you to go back and look at your budget and look at your expenses. Um, it can be quite expensive in this arena. Um, so I would just say revisit that. Uh, I would like to congratulate you on your SWAT. Excellent, excellent. Um, you, you had the, the, the proper um, weaknesses, threats, challenges in that. I, I would, and I can't remember it pervadum, but I would say that you had, I think, a weakness or a threat uh, not being able to get outside of your immediate, the Ashland Huntington area. I don't know that I would perceive that as a weakness or a threat population is quite well from a startup standpoint that's where my concentration would be uh, it could be a long-term weakness or a long-term threat if you if you can't take the company to the next level but starting out I, I, I don't know that I would proceed it that way but excellent job on your SWAT thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Caroline, isn't that your computer? The final presentation today is uh, West Carter High School.
Hello, everybody. We're students from West Carter High School. My name is Carolyn Daniel. This is Claire Holbrook, and this is Rylan Rayburn, and we are Insight Emergency Solutions. We feel extremely honored and a little bit nervous to be saying in front of you guys today, but we're going to get a little hot and heavy real quick. Uh, we've all experienced the mental anguish of schools falling victim to things like fire hazards, uh, natural disasters, and of course, school shootings. Now, students see these travesties in the media all the time, but we tend to distance ourselves because it's not directly happening to us, but you and I are well aware that it can be and it will be. Uh, many of our surrounding schools have suffered from the threats even in these recent years. At the time, we weren't prepared, but now we can be with Insight. Insight Emergency Solutions is our first responders' new secret weapon. We plan to provide a 3D virtual model of school blueprints to our local first responders including our fire department, EMT services, and our police force. Insight started as an STLP project and was initially created for incoming freshmen or transfer students. Our school has a complicated layout. For example, we have room numbers 216 and 240 located right next to each other. We ran with the idea, but quickly realized giving the public access to our school's layout was dangerous for students and staff. Next slide, please. Or, all right. Uh, Sorry. Insight was created to strictly be accessed by the chief of each of these departments. With Insight, these chiefs are now able to create a more in-depth plan of attack for ingress and egress during emergencies. Now let's take a look at our website. Please me whenever you can, please. Yeah. Right. This website is currently a work in progress, so we are showing you our previous prototype for security reasons. We have partnered with professionals in order to create a top-notch cybersecurity system, which is actually being built behind the scenes today. Through our website, a member holding the specific login and key will be able to access the school buildings connected to that key. We plan on having all necessary information about what we are, who we are, and how we got started, as well as how to get access to your own product. Next slide, please. So the video plane behind me is the user interface of our product. Once you click in, you can move up, down, left, right. Could you hit play, please? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got through that again. So this is the 2D image where you can see the layout. You can see any kind of nook and cranny or any door entrance, anything like that. And you can even see which lights are out in the building, which could potentially help janitors as well. <laughs> Carter County Schools Chief of Police, R.D. Porter, has shown interest in our idea from the start. And with his help, we have a chance at a grant of up to $10,000 from TC Energy. We aim to create layouts for all schools in Carter County, including all elementary, middle, and high schools. We are grateful for the support we have received and for the cooperation of our school and school district's police force. We would also like to give a big thanks to our Chief, R.D. Porter. Next slide, please. We recognize a problem within not only our schools, but all schools, current security systems, and plan to solve it with your help. The problem being that, in emergencies, first responders have limited access to useful layouts of our schools, especially those responders who have never been in these buildings before. This, understandably, would cause safety issues to arise, such as entering a building blindly while there's an active shooter at large. Let's hear so from our school resource officer himself. Next slide, please. Can you press play on that? Every time I've entered into a building, it's been a blind entrance almost. And in every situation that has a whole other degree of danger of a homes, if I had a program like this, such as this that I could pull up, look, we could more intelligently deploy our manpower. There is no situation which I was looking for a suspect or going into an emergency where a program such as this would have been by. But to have that inside in such detail where you can even look up, down, around corners, uh, that's never existed. And you know, being able to have a 3D model mock-up that you can turn any way you need to turn is something that a 2D piece of paper can't give you. Okay. Our solution. The three of us create those missing blueprints. Using a 360 camera, an app with the needed software, and a personal draft to secure school safety, we created Insight. For our school system alone, we gathered around 200 photos with a 360 camera, then uploaded them onto the app, iSpy360. This app is designed 
specifically designed to create 360 models similar to what Google Earth accomplishes. Within 24 hours, the app software team publishes a blueprint ready to use. It's as easy as that for us. Next slide, please. To have the product created, the software team asks $1 per photo we upload. In order for us to make any profit, we have to charge more than a dollar per photo, such given other expenses, such as travel, time, and man hours. For the other 10 schools within our county, we will charge $5 per photo, four for us, one for the software. There are about 170 school districts in Kentucky. Say we only gathered around 100 of those school districts and captured um, blueprints for them, our company would make around $1 million in revenue. The initial charge is about 5,000 to 10,000 per school district. That depends on how big the schools are and how, like, how many schools there are in that district. And we offer subscription-based maintenance. So if you need to do updates, those would cost the exact same as what your original cost was. So if we needed to make updates because we had, in addition to the school, like we had a new hall, um, our school would be, or the schools in our county would be $5 too. Um, we already have eyes on a few school systems apart from our own, Floyd County being one of the tops, and then the surrounding ones right, right out of Carter County. We bring the passion to be as successful as we plan to be with Insight. We already have the camera, software, and access to a national network of school safety-minded professionals. Next slide. We hope to have our website fully up and running by April so we can be prepared to set up an exhibit at the Kentucky Senate for School Safety Conference in June. And also, we hope to attend the National Association for School Resource Officers Convention that has up to 12,000 attendees, and it takes place in July in Phoenix, Arizona. This is just the beginning. We will expand to hospitals, nursing homes, and more. We aim to focus on locations where mass gatherings take place. We know that you guys are well aware of the dangers of the world, but one thing that we experience that you may not is having to sit mere inches from your peers and practice saving your own life, which can mean life or death during that drill. Uh, I may not have been through an experience of my own, and I'd prefer to keep it that way. However, having to look your peers in the eyes as we practice saving our own lives is enough of a motivator to get us to come up with a solution. On a brighter note, we are super excited to try and make this business a reality. We already have almost everything we need. We've got our camera, software, a website, and a possible grant. While our business is in its infancy, we will see, we will see it to fruition. No doubt we could benefit from your feedback, advice, and your help learning how to network in order to grow. So that's all we're asking. We want to thank you guys so much for your time today. What questions do you have? Nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Really, uh, nice ideal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank it you. could grow um, really big. So I guess my, my question is, uh, how how from a startup situation are you going to market this ideal to your local county and maybe your adjacent counties? Our local chief of police, Artie Porter, he has already started marketing on his own. We haven't asked him to do anything. He's talked to Carter County nursing homes. He's talked to Carter County uh, like doctor's offices. He's already talked to Moorhead, uh, the clinic over there. Uh, we haven't really started marketing or anything. We don't really want to market to the public for, of course, security reasons. But with those uh, with events the, that we're yeah. going to be going to, we want to be able to market them there to other entrepreneurs uh, to maybe have this business uh, within theirs to have more safety to whoever is reaching out to us. <laughs> we also about, sorry, two weeks ago, we went to the Carter County Board of Directors, like the school system, and we presented this to them and they were full, bo full on board with it and they are happy to have the other 10 schools have this mm -hmm. implemented. So I just understand, correct, if you had a situation at a school or, or, or wherever, this is live? I mean, if, if, if the police... No, it's not live. It's no, no, not no, no, live. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Of course, yeah. Thank you. Very impressive. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yes, what you've already accomplished. Okay. 
So tell me a little more about how you make sure that this does not end up in the wrong hands. Okay, so currently we are working with professionals about cybersecurity, which is uh, our only and biggest risk at the moment. Uh, so we're trying to work it with as many people as we can. We're working with people who are from the school and people who work at MSU and the biggest people we can uh, in order to create such a locked in website. Um, and as the farthest that we can go aside from that is only giving access to the chief of each of these departments so that they are responsible for giving the key out to who they believe would uh, benefit from it. So only being their officers or maybe even keeping it to themselves and presenting it themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, maybe that, is that gonna be like a rotate, like is the key gonna change every so often? We like you, to we, think so. Okay. Uh, it, it goes a lot into the, the guy we've hired to create our website. Uh, we're going to do like maintenance every so often, changing up some stuff for mm -hmm. those security reasons. And do you happen to know, is there anything here that you might need to patent to protect your business? Uh, that's one of the costs that we're looking at currently is insurance and patentings and stuff like that. But since we haven't started outside of our general uh, area, we haven't looked into it uh, that far yet, mm -hmm. but yes, there are patents and everything that we, we've started to look at. Okay. Uh, and we've started making contracts and everything, just putting everything together right now. Okay, that's great. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent work. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, what is iSpy360? Okay, it's the app that, um, can you go to the slide real quick? <laughs> it is the app that takes all of the pictures that we upload to it and it actually creates a tour for us. We don't have to paste them together because the team that they have actually does it all for us. Is it a secure website? Yes. Yes, they've even offered to have a partnership with us at some point, so uh, they're very out of business oriented. Like if, they, if we wanted to do something with their software, they are all the way for it as long as we partner with them to do it. So. Okay, and the website currently, if you would have access to, access to schools blueprints would just be on the website computer interface or would you want to do also an app that was handheld on the phone or something like that as well? I think an app would definitely be handy, but as far as we've gone currently, we've only done a website just because it's easier, easily accessible. Yeah. Uh, but I think an app is a very smart idea, especially if we're going to give it only to certain people. So we're thinking about it. Okay. And then you said that you had some schools and districts that are already full on board. Does that mm -hmm. mean that they're willing and wanting to pay for this? Yes. Or that yes. they just get, okay, mm -hmm. that's my question. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Wonderful job. I kept Thank marking you. out questions because I had a marketing question, then a patent question, and so <laughs> now here we are. Um, so I guess my other question is, so with the camera system, mm -hmm. you currently have one on hand. Well, as you expand and grow, are you looking to purchase more oh, yes, cameras? Mm -hmm. And yes. what is the cost of one of those cameras? I'm, they were around like $400 and we paid for it using our multimedia funds. Mm -hmm. So once we actually make this our actual business, we would buy ourselves one mm -hmm. and then we continue to buy more and more as we grow. The so. grant that we applied for uh, is almost a secure yes. They just haven't told us the exact amount uh, that they're going to give us. So we could buy as many cameras as we wanted with the $10,000. <laughs> Okay, so outside of that equipment cost and then the dollar per photo from the mm -hmm. software, that's the only... In our time, of course, and but other time. than that, yeah. Okay, so they won't change the price as you grow. They're not going to, no. you don't think that mm -hmm. they'll change it's the price? It's strictly a dollar per yeah. photo we upload. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Um, Thank you. I was at your, your district competition and thought this was a great idea then <laughs> to... Um, and I appreciate that you took some of our suggestions from the district <laughs> competition and put them in this. That's noted, by the way. Thank you. Um, good job. I don't really have a, a long list of questions because most of what I needed to ask has already been mm -hmm. asked. But have you identified, are there any competitors for you in this market? We've asked uh, both the man that you saw in the video and our chief of police, and they said that what they are using currently for our school districts is basically like a hand-drawn blueprint for yeah. the high schools. So as far as our county goes, there aren't, like that, 
2D print is our only competitor so far. Yeah, so. I think I told you guys at the district competition that my husband is a retired school resource mm -hmm. officer, and so this all of this kind of plays out in my brain very nicely. And Thank you've you. done a wonderful job in terms of, I loved how you said you were going to go to the National SRO Conference. I've been to that. That's, there's a lot of people there, and that's <laughs> going to be a great market for you. And I, I appreciate that you are, are forward thinking to look at those markets and to, to think about scaling this well beyond Carter County and even the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. you. Um, so just out of curiosity, um, have you, have you done this for your full school already? You already have your... We have gotten the whole school done. We just have to, like, we don't want to upload it anywhere yet in case... Right. Yeah. So <laughs> my question is um, about how many photos is in that. Like, how many photos are you... Would, if you did this for your school, how many photos would that be? We took about 200, okay. more or less, but... Yeah. <laughs> it took us 200 photos and it took us all together, it was our first time, it took us all together two hours. And say we were selling this product to somebody else and we're selling them $500 per photo, we would make that $800 profit in as little as two hours and it was our first time too. So yeah. that time I felt was pretty, pretty good for our first time. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. Um, but I don't have any further questions. They've all been answered, so great Thank job. you. Thank you so much. Thanks guys, great job, Thank congratulations you. on being here. Um, you did do a few things here that I absolutely love, business to business, businesses, B2B, <laughs> uh, big fan. Anytime you have the opportunity for government contracts, and also you're planning on being at some of these trade shows where the decision makers will be there and you can have mm -hmm. private conversations with them, directly with them. So I think those are all great ideas. Um, one thing I'm interested in, and maybe I just missed out on it, is how are the emergency professionals going to access this? The police, EMS, how do they see it? Uh, through this website, they are able to put in a certain login and key. Uh, it's only going to be accessed by the chief of the, each of these departments, and they are able to share it themselves with who they trust, because, you know, we can't define that. We can't that. really but, uh, that. But they are going to access it through that website, and maybe even an app one day, uh, through a secure login and key. Okay, so it's through, it's not through the iSpy though, it would be through your no. proprietary website, correct? Correct, yes. The tour uh, was kind of created through iSpy. We just had the pictures and they're going to give it to us and we're going to offer that to those who, who are paying for it. Okay, and is this developed or is it being developed, the website? Which part? The website? Mm -hmm. It is currently being developed just so we can have like top notch, like cybersecurity. We don't want to give them something that's like half done. We don't want to give out any security reasons to be defaulty or and anything. And you're, you're getting feedback from your local police chief and people yes, like that yes. what you're doing. That could end up being one of your biggest advantages. If you mm -hmm. can get all of these services on board in an area, mm -hmm. switching over to another service would make it more difficult. Mm -hmm. It would make it easier for you to get a higher percentage of the businesses in that area, school mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, I'm a little interested in the revenue model, but it, but it seems like you'll, you'll develop that more as you go. So um, I'm good. Thank you all. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Thank you, guys. So that concludes the uh, the pitch competition, and of course, we originally had 12 teams that was uh, going to participate, and four had to drop out for various reasons. Therefore, rather than waiting till 5 or 5.30 for an awards dinner, we're just going to have some pizza brought in here in a few minutes while our CPA is calculating the or tabulating the scores, which he's already finished with the morning part, so it won't be that much longer, probably 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, and then at that time we will announce the winners and, uh, and that will be, the event will be over at that time. Thank you all for coming. Really do appreciate it. So, for the first time, we have a tie for third 
place and we're going to pay two third place awards. So if anybody in here has $1,500 extra, they want to make a tax deductible contribution to Cedar, we will take it. Uh, otherwise, I'll be out on the corner over here with a bucket. So I've only got one set for third place because I never dreamed we'd have it out of seven judges. Now, this is amazing out of seven judges that we have a tie. So, anyway. So third place, the first third place is Craft Academy number one. This is three hundred dollars each that would be going to each of these teams. Okay, cash. Hey, wait, wait a minute. We don't want two guys. I'm in them. They all the other way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, the other third place team tie is, uh, who is it? Ashley and Paul Blazer. It was just amazing, though, a tie with seven judges. Second place goes to East Ridge High School. Our first place team winner is uh, West Carter High School. My old team, Coach, 
We got rid of that money back from the double third party. Okay, that's a wrap. Thank you all so much for coming. Everybody be careful going home, and hope you have the merriest of Christmases and the happiest of New Year's.